she was a normal kid and we were best friends and everything and something happened and she just she just snapped like on a molecular level this kid just snapped get out sorry man okay get out yo 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 chill man get out chill chill chill, chill, chill man time that we discussed this particular content creator we discussed her in the context of her takes about politics which were not good in fact this is a regular thing that she tries to dip her toes into and fails what i wanted to do and this is something easy and i've discussed mm -hmm. is that we want to kind of give some some caveats yeah. beforehand and then we will get into a little bit of our history with her and then we'll get into some of the other allegations that have been made against lily and then we have a special discussion that we're going to have. So we'll get to that in a little while. Couple caveats. One is that there only can be one of us talking. There can be only one. As such, mm -hmm. that means that if I am speaking, this is something that we've actually discussed and that both of us are on the same page on. Makes sense? If we are trying to discuss something, we try to make sure we're co consistent and cohesive. If you're new to the channel and we have 360 people here, so God knows some of you are, mm -hmm. understand that even though I tend to do a lot of the talking because it's my job, I'm the therapist by trade and as such, I do a lot of talking. We are of consensus on this. We are having the same takes. If we don't, you will hear about it because it happens rarely. Otherwise, just assume we both have the same take. Other caveats is we want to talk about trigger warnings. So trigger warnings today are going to be for CSA, transphobia, grooming, and a whole host of other things that are not fun. Uh, a lot of sexually inappropriate material, but mostly in the background. Not that we're going to be going into that stuff super hard, but that will be in like the backdrop. If this really is not your jam, if this is really negatively impacting your psyche, GTFO, come to the video later or watch it in segments. Like just you don't do this all at once. Mm-hmm. Okay. Please do self-care. We do have some good videos for self-care. We have the container meditation on the channel and also square breathing. To start off with, let's talk about our history. How we came across Lily was originally I was a viewer of Lily's. I am your number one fan. I had found her early into my transition or before my transition mm -hmm. with the intention of trying to find various trans content creators because I wanted people to listen to because this was the direction I was going. One of the reasons I liked Lily so much at the time was that Lily was very aggressive and very direct about the way she handled things. There are a lot of takes that Lily has that I agree with. And there are a lot of things that at the time I really appreciated about her. Where things started to fall off is she put out a video about ContraPoints. And this was about the time I started disconnecting from a lot of her content. And this was because not only was I transitioning and starting to have to come to some terms with some things about myself already. But on top of it, it really was an issue of her ContraPoints video was garbage. It was filled with lies, misinformation, half-truths. We've covered ContraPoints number, a number of times on here. I will cover her again if I have to. But the reality is, is a lot of the, the claims against her, including the idea that she's MB-phobic or that she did any of this negative stuff, Almost all of it is bunk. The only thing you can really nail her on is for not doing enough research on Buck Angel. And honestly, I don't even care about that. I just don't. There was no real harm done in these circumstances. People just sort of manufactured harm. In fact, that situation is what originally led to our first discussions of both the Puritanical Progressive, which you can find on this channel. Mm -hmm. uh, you also can look up things such as the Offense versus Harm list, which is also on this channel. When we, I started the channel originally, the channel was called Transgirl Therapist. And the reason was is ZZ was dealing with very severe migraines. And I had always intended ZZ to join. I just needed a name. And it was the one that came to you know mind at the time and it sounded poppy, or no, po no pun intended. <laughs> I think you only like streamed like three times without me. And yeah, then... yeah, no, it was really. It was real short. I had an interaction with Lily online where Lily got salty and blocked me on Twitter. And I ended up doing a video about it talking about why I thought that she needed to work on kind of not being such a. This was a very simple thing. I was very nice about it. I did it very, you know, big therapist speak, all that good stuff. That didn't react well. She didn't like that. Not one. Bit. And then shortly after my video came out, a video came out from Levy Named Bird, 
who is the I think was or is the editor for Essence of Thought. And essentially, a levy named Bird decided to at me on Twitter saying that I had not listened to the victims and didn't cover Lily properly and all that, to which then I corrected him, I believe it's him, that his video had come out three days after mine and I couldn't have known these allegations without being psychic. He then backpedaled and acted like an asshat, saying I was still doing something or other, and we ended up mutually blocking one another. Why this matters to you is, is that woke scolds think alike. Short version, puritanical progressives all think alike. This is how they all behave. They make claims and then they backpedal when you, when you push back on the claim. So we ended up doing a video on that, said we need to talk. That was the name of the video where we talked about a, uh, a levy named Burr. And all of a sudden, Lily, put out a giant post on her Tumblr that was uh, aimed at me and had ignored my partner. And so we went over that list on stream long ago in a galaxy far, far fucking away. And we're going to look at just a, the last bit of that. I don't know. Apologize to your audience for your shit behavior. Maybe teach them something different than just lash out and rage is okay. No, seriously, it's not abuse, guys. Seriously. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or you can do this. And this is the one I think you'll probably choose. You'll either make another post on Tumblr that'll be just as grammatically nonsensical and also meaningless, and I will damn sure go after that one too. Or you'll make a glass of water about me. I really hope it's this one. This one excites me. And here's what you're going to do, because I know your style. Remember, I watched you for years, dear. You're either going to A, make a glass of water about mental health issues while talking about how not all therapists can be, you know, listened to or trusted, and sort of incepting to your audience that just because someone is an expert does not mean that they necessarily know what they're talking about, which then reifies and sort of primes your community to not listen to anyone who calls you out on your shit behavior. Or you'll make a glass of water about me using the same techniques you did to Natalie Wynn. You'll take a bunch of things I said out of context. You will put them together in a way that is the most negative way humanly possible. You will then call into question my entire career and my entire time as a therapist. And then you're going to play a screenshot from the show Lois and Clark, where both Lois and Clark say, yikes. Did I get everything? Here's the problem, Lily. Any of these you pick, I win. Either you leave me alone, you improve as a person, or you platform my channel. Seriously, that's your options. Either keep my name out your mouth, learn to be an adult, or make some glass of waters about me and just give me that delicious engagement. <laughs> Yeah, right? Or she'll use the pictures of a crying baby or Josh Gorcher. I mean, these jokes are really clear and con constant. Lily, I get your style. I used to like it. But the thing is, is that I don't like the way you treat people. And I said so in my previous video, and I tried to be fair to you. I'm not going to be fair to you anymore. I really like you as a person. I actually wanted to, at one point, reach out to you. Your consistent behavior online makes me believe you're a toxic person. And it makes me think that there are very real critiques being made against you. And if the best you can come up with is, is that I'm an armchair psychologist and essence of thought is a turf, you're a fucking joke. So is this the start of the demon arc? This might have been the start of the demon arc. <laughs> God damn. This was uh, this was a thing that happened. Um, yeah, as yeah. you can see, mom was mad. Um and shortly after that, we hadn't heard much from her. She molded over on Tumblr, which is the Badlands. No one cared. And then she reared her cute little head out again and decided to do a hit piece on five of her former friends, calling them all abusers and harassers and stalkers, when in reality, they're mostly her victims, allegedly. And then proceeded to add us in there because we had made her mad as one of her stalkers. And so this was why the channel for a good short month was named... Carol. Carol. It's Cheryl. Because Lily is not cute. <laughs> she is not smart, nor is she clever. Welcome let's, uh, to Carol. Let's well, well, welcome to us discussing Carol and me in a sports bra. It's good shit. Go. Women and she took part in the harassment herself and has gone as far as to pretend to have a medical degree to justify psychoanalyzing me without ever having met me so that she can claim I'm bipolar, have narcissistic personality disorder and borderline personality disorder. Whoa. <laughs> Wait. Wow, wow. We gotta we gotta talk about the claims here, folks. Ooh. Okay, so starting from the front, uh one, occupation white supremacist. No one pays me from white supremacy, so uh please, uh, where are those checks? <laughs> also, I don't have a medical degree. I have a license that's, in counsel. Well, I have a license in counseling. That's, that's not a medical degree. Medical degrees I have are a not masters. What medical the degrees are not the same as 
Wait, so what? So is I that farming degrees? you for content? I've literally made two videos about you. You do you count? <laughs> what have we done extra videos? Did we do? Did you do videos when I wasn't no, looking? No, no, no videos for me. No, no. Okay, wait, hold on. I gotta back this up. Wait, I like that inciting incident though was blocked on the bird app. Like that was. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta hear these again, because we gotta, we gotta pause it piece by piece. GR and Vita. Carol is actually a right-wing grifter who has been trying to content farm me to distract from the fact that she defended Vosh's violent and racist harassment of two black women. Okay, so let's go over that. We totally defended Vosh in both of these cases. Yep, um, absolutely. In the case of Professor Flowers, Professor Flowers demonstrably was basically a genocide enthusiast. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I just, I find her rhetoric really disturbing and bothersome. I know previously I've tried to be more balanced about her, but as time has gone on, Nothing has been favorable towards her. Pia basically said that marginalized people have the right to do everything up to and including just wiping groups off uh, off the map, including ethnic cleansing, gen you know, cultural genocide, things like that. I watched that entire debate. I've watched it twice because I wanted to make sure I didn't get it. I have no love towards Professor Flowers. None. None, none, none. none. No, no. And now, and Vosh never brought any harassment towards her. There is still yet to be any proof of this. Still true. If you talk to White mm -hmm. Nervosa, you talk to Tempest, all of these harassments you guys claim that Vosh's community does, no one has ever brought forth receipts. There are people giving you comments and critiques, but there has not been actually any real harm. You need to actually demonstrate that. If these people are so bad, where are the screenshots? Wouldn't there be screenshots from members of a community if you were being dogpiled in DMs and things like that? Right, right. Yeah, this is this is this literally goes to the non-compete stuff too. As far as uh, do you want to talk about Professor Flowers at all, or do you want me to go on to Cat Black? I was just saying we're both of the same mind on that one. Oh yeah, no, we were both listening to that and horrified by it. Cat Black, I've not been a particular fan of. I like her work. I didn't like True Tea. I thought it was boring as shit. And uh, let me be super clear: beautiful woman, very intelligent on kink. Um, she broke consent and engaged in online abuse towards Vosh by bringing up specifically that she had sexted with him and spoke negatively about his dick. Like, <laughs> if the roles were reversed and he was talking about a trans woman's genitalia, the internet would have lost their collective minds. But because she has more intersection points, all of a sudden, somehow she wins the math. I don't know. This, this again, the idea that I'm a right-wing grifter, um, I make most of my money through my job. You guys only end up paying us probably upwards of like two to three hundred dollars a month, maybe. Who am I grifting? Women and took part in the harassment herself and has gone as far as to pretend to have a medical degree to justify psychoanalyzing me without ever having met me so that she can claim I'm by Never psychoanalyzed her. Citation needed. <laughs> Do you remember any time that I ever, ever tried to, to espouse any idea of what the hell's going on inside Lily's head? Oh, absolutely not. Let me tell you how many times the... Uh a week we go not your not your therapist yeah i mean like this is this is in two minutes in and she's already just making things up i actually invite everyone to go watch all two and a half videos of her the original one where i gave her very light slap on the hand critique the one where we talk about levy and levy's freaking out about about the mm -hmm. essence of thought video and the one where we went over specifically her bullshit claims that were bullshit then. I still maintain, though this has been told to me now that this is different, um, that, you know, if her fans knew where I lived and could actually find my real name, I could actually deal with very real problems. Would they get my license taken away? Probably not. Does that mean that, like, it could still cause me headache and I have to go in to say, see licensure and things like that? Absolutely. Um, cause none of these people are my fucking clients. So they really can't say shit. The only people that can really talk shit about me and say that I've done anything negative would be that unless you can prove that I broke our code of ethics. And I actually went over stream with that and pointed out that I never did. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, all this happened. Now, specifically on the claims, I can't say whether she has any of these disorders or not. She's never confirmed her specific diagnosis, say for one Tumblr post. And I don't know if I can even believe that. I know she identifies, I believe is autistic. But that's me parroting her. So, so as you can see, Lily um, lost the plot. Everyone else in this video, she was so mad at us. And I think by us, I mean me, the collective Carol, um, that she then made everybody else in this video was everyone from Sega Sister to Witchy Lizzie, Patchwork Heart. Um, yeah, she just went hard against all these people. And, and every claim mm -hmm. against them is just as dumb, just as stupid. 
just is absolutely nonsensical. So then we were like, guess what? We're not going to do another Lily video. We did one one year. We did one another year. We're not going to do another Lily video. And then Christmas came early. Yeah, right. And then she did a video about politics as fandom. Yeah. And uh, my editor tells me, or my, uh, my, my mod tells me that this is at... She brings us up briefly at 43. See, this one always disappointed me because I was like, Lily, can, couldn't you have done more for us? Most likely over nothing. As much as many of these people talk about recruiting, they're not recruiting for anything but their own fan bases. While I compared them to the cartoon That's community, I find true. a better parallel is between parental and psychology channels. While you can find resources and directions for psychology and therapy on YouTube, you will also political. find a lot of content farm clickbait doing uh, a little more than using the language of psychology activism. for clicks. And especially drama channels who just Yay! want to call sociopaths and armchair diagnose people they don't like. And oh, now you <laughs> oh, 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 wait, 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 I gotta back up, I gotta back up, I gotta back up, I gotta hold on, shh, 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 guys, guys, real quick. <laughs> And especially drama channels who just want to call people sociopaths and armchair diagnose people they don't like and navigate. Wait, is it a sociopath now? Because you lied and said I called you a narcissist. Is it now a sociopath? Have you upgraded the story because narcissist wasn't hard enough? Oh, Damn. and she had you on the screen. She actually improved. That's true. That's true. real improvement. Good for you, Lily. Probably you remember she my could partner only... existed. Probably because she could only oh, just take the channel art thumbnail There's from one point in the corner, too, of the bed still. You fucking... Like, this is all I can clip. <laughs> It would look weird if she clipped me out. Just saying. You rotten kumquat. Moving on. <laughs> Getting that and knowing who is real and who is a fucking charlatan or just a novelty product is important. RedTube has. So, as you can see, we have a sordid history. Uh, a sordid history with Lily. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that a nice trip through memory lane? Um. But you have to understand that Lily has done more than that. For one, it's been very clear that Lily has engaged in some level of things like sock puppet accounts. She's engaged in places where she's literally changed her own TV tropes page, at least allegedly. They kicked her off of there for that reason. She's allegedly, according to Kiwi Farmers, been on Kiwi Farms basically, I guess, looking to see what they say about her. It's usually not anything good. Then from there, a large swath of videos came out. There was the one about the writers, but we're not going to cover that because I don't care. That's subjective nonsense. Um, there were a lot of videos that came out last that in the last year or so that basically covered a lot of things. And so we've made some clips from them. Now, I want to be clear. We're going to go through these clips and we're going to go through each of them. These clips are put together by a guest editor. And I want to be very clear that we are going to tell you where you can find these. And when we put out the actual segment, the links will be down below. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if any of the content creators who made these feel like we misrepresented them, I apologize. We did the best we could. And we are going to link your video down below so people can see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Right around this time, a whole bunch of videos came out by Essence of Thought. Essence of Thought is a YouTuber. They are a, they, and I believe one other person there are a channel that covers various different left leaning folks, discusses trans rights, etc. I have not been a huge fan. Uh, I think Ethel does very detailed work. I, I think that their delivery is really dry. But let's check out what they have to say about Lily. And again, each of these clips is about three to five minutes long. They just cover basically the discussion pieces. And again, no shade meant. We're just doing clips in order to cover this. We wanted to get these done ahead of time. So again, the videos mm -hmm. will be down below. If I forget and you're watching this segment, yell at me and I will fix it. Also, the videos are really representative of the people that made them. We wanted to give an overview of this situation thus far beyond just us. Anyway, let's see what I'll see what Ethel had to say. So with that noted, let's move on to Lily's main argument. That it was I'm about to talk to the editor. Why? Why does Ethel have a Mickey Mouse voice? <laughs> Whoops. Um, it was okay for her to pressure a no minor into watching her flash on stream since their stream was flagged as 18 plus. Indeed, since the second video was published, Lily's go-to defense on Tumblr has been to point this out, glossing over key points raised in our video. I'd like to apologize again to Ethel. I did not know the editor would make you sound like a chipmunk. I know I said that before, but I'd like to say it again. I apologize. They will be flogged. She then went on to repeat these arguments during one of her streams. According to them, months ago during, uh, months ago during, uh, my, during the last stream where I got my tits out, um, Apparently some teenager managed to get into the, uh, managed to get, managed to get past all the warnings saying, hey, this stream is 18 plus, and saw my tits, and that is apparently my fault. According to this opportunistic turf, they were like, why is this stream 18 plus? And I said, click fuck around and find out. Which is just like, I mean, makes sense when somebody asks a stupid fucking question like that. 
Like, why is the stream 18 plus? What do you think? Ah, I see Lily has that magical amnesia that means she can't remember said events, yet apparently remembers them well enough to assert with absolute certainty what she said and the tone she said it in, because spoiler, what she just told her audience was nowhere in Glaze's testimony. That said, there's a number of other things to unpack here, starting with the fact that 18 plus is not synonymous with sexually gratifying content. We actually covered this in the Glade video itself, touching on how both swearing and LGBT plus content is perceived by the current status quo as being mature or adult, in spite of neither of these things being on the same level as sexually gratifying content. We went so far as to note how, at the time Lily pressured Glade into watching, YouTube was being publicly dragged for flagging LGBT plus content and even entire channels as 18 plus because they touched upon LGBT plus topics. So there was no way for Glade to know the reason behind the stream being age restricted and whether it was for a valid reason or not. That's why he asked Lily. And Lily has even used this point in her own arguments, telling people that, you know I said fuck in a lot of videos that aren't age-gated, you gonna pretend to be angry about that too? So Lily demonstrates a clear understanding that things as harmless as swearing and as life-saving as LGBT plus resources are treated as adult by a conservative and queer music society, yet she pretends otherwise as a means to justify attacking her victim with incredible vitriol, painting what was a reasonable question with ableist slurs. This is because she has no other way to defend her actions, all she can do is blame her victim for what she, herself, did. Even YouTube's terms of service state very clearly that explicit content meant to be sexually gratifying is not allowed on YouTube, which is further expanded upon to include nudity or partial nudity. So to bring this up, because it's hard to, it, is, it might be hard for some to understand Chipmunk Ethel. What Ethel is talking about is a circumstance where there was a YouTube stream where Lily was streaming and it was set as 18 plus and essentially a... I guess a child, uh, a, a young fan got in there and essentially uh, Lily flashed the camera. I've seen the video. It's not very impressive. Sorry, Lily. This person, this particular minor, from what I understand, has previous history with Lily. I don't know if we're going to cover that in these videos, but if I remember correctly, there has been some interaction previously. Lily was also a fan of something known as Fire Rose, a shipping name that combined the names of Commander Firebrand and Ink Rose. That this led an anonymous user to ask her why on Tumblr, a question she answered with, Real reason. The two of them have the exact same values, the exact same traditions, and the exact same virtues and vices. That's not just a silly ship. I actually said to Josh that he and Inkros were practically made for each other. And if this ship becomes canon, I will have the most smug I told you so face in the history of smug I told you so faces. But she's underage. She won't be for very long. Also, I wrote a book where a 15-year-old ran off with a 38-year-old, and you all thought it was lovely. So let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Birds. The problem of which is, both Josh and Lily were 23 years old at the time this was posted. That means they had, at the very least, six years on Ink Rose, a significant age difference when one of those people is also a minor. Through her posturing, Lily is presenting grooming as this quirky thing that some people personally dislike, rather than abusive behavior that needs to be dealt with. Consider the she won't be for long remark that Lily deploys in response to someone hypothetically mentioning Ink Rose is underage. This is a quintessential example of the jailbait wait, a media trope in which a character waits for their love interest to reach the age of consent, being applied in real life. Child grooming is not the act of sexually assaulting minors. It refers to a series of methods designed to dismantle the defenses a minor has in preparation for sexual assault, a large part of which is the normalization Something I've been big on is not over-focusing on the possibility that fictional child porn creates new predators, since the science on that is inconclusive. Instead, I sure. focus on how it grooms minors into thinking that them being sexualized is normal, harms survivors of childhood sexual assault by triggering them, creates communities in which predators can hide and form rank, and lastly, the way in which it normalizes the act of grooming and even child sexual assault in the eye of the public. And it's that last one we're seeing here. Lily is very consciously using her own child rape fanfics to normalize the real life act of grooming in her audience's mind. Lastly, we come to her satirical quip about Josh and Ink being endangered animals who need to be bred in order to survive. She is not simply talking about a romantic relationship, she is talking about sex. That's why Lily follows us up with the fact that Ink Rose is underage in her serious answer, Rose. This post is Lily not only normalizing grooming, but statuary rape as well. And it's at that point that Liddy came along and argued that Fire Rose should be more than fiction, that Josh and Ink- So the thing I wanted to bring up here is just that 
I, for the most part, agree with Ethel here. I do think that some of the conclusions that they come to insofar as like mm-hmm. the normalization of certain types of things, I think that's a very complicated discussion. Um, mm-hmm. I think that genuinely speaking, um, fiction and um, that is a much more complicated topic. And we've talked about that on the channel before. We've talked a number about normalization and how generally it needs a much, much larger group of people to do something than just a singular person well too clever by half making a joke about someone turning 18 is grooming well no but talking about shipping two people and how they'll be 18 soon and how you're sort of aiming them in that direction is a type of grooming it's not just the joke it's the joke connected with everything else another one of lily orchard's victims is ready to have their testimony heard a lot of the streams lily orchard does nowadays have a showing off herself nude as well as her girlfriend michaela First of all, that breaks YouTube's terms of service, but she always gets away with it because she deletes the stream straight after, hiding the evidence, of course. She also posted unfiltered news on her Tumblr and an easily accessible link to her fan art, much of which is not safe for work, on a Google Sheet. Lily has also posted porn on Main a lot. Like, holy fuck. Not only of her, but I found porn of her being fucked by dogs through a Tumblr blog archiving her wrongdoings, which got nuked years ago. It Jesus. wasn't the anthro furry kind either. I would have been 17 seeing that, but many of her fans are younger. Everything I mentioned, bar the streams, I saw as a minor. I'm 21 now and stopped watching her a few years ago, but I check up on her occasionally and she- So I actually want to talk about this because I have a feeling this can, this, some of these critiques could be aimed uh, in, in my general d- direction. If you look at my Twitter, it is marked as no one under 18 should look at it. And the reason being is because I'm a degenerate. I look at a lot of furry art. I commission a lot of furry art. This channel has never been for kids. Generally speaking, we don't mind baboos in our community and we keep them safe and separated from all that stuff. But that's why we have a Twitter that's specifically for the channel. My Twitter is not. And it specifically says, do not interact if you are 18. This is a big difference between myself and Lily is that Lily portrays herself as being this person Mm -hmm. who's the defender of minors and how she is trying to, you know, make sure they're protected from predators. But then she does this really weird behavior where she's constantly posting this kind of stuff where they can find it. I make no such claims other than to say that, you know, we protect baboos when they're in our community. We do the best we can. We try to give people resources. But my Twitter is my Twitter. I post on there all I want, simple as. And minors and clients, for that matter, are not supposed to interact. If they do, I block them. Yeah, until Twitter inevitably explodes. But that's not relevant right now. So again, I just want to be really clear is like, I don't have a problem with content creators being horny on main. We, we, oh, yeah. we stand that. That's fine. It's just... You actually got to make it, make your stuff open enough to the point where like somebody can actually have the information to make an informed decision about what kind of content they want to see or not see. Well, exactly. And one of the things that I think is really important is if you actually go into our analytics, and I can show you this, the number of people who are underage that see our videos are out of our total, total audience is like 0.25 or 0.5. It's very small. The thing I want to be really clear about that is this channel has never been aimed at this. We try to take proper precautions. There's no not safe for work stuff allowed in safe. If you go to Euclid, you usually have to be 18 years or older. We've made exceptions, I think, twice. And most of the stuff is kept in Keter that is usually not safe for work, including a lot of the stuff that I commission. You can see the commissions I have, but you, they're all labeled as either mature or adult on for, for affinity. And you can't get onto F list unless you're actually a freaking adult. Yes, she very much keeps uh, mature issues, things somewhat separated in her content. She focuses a lot on kids shows and things like that. Heroes, or Chris is noticing a, a, that she struggles with. Struggles to do so. Yeah, 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 yeah that's fair. If you include a 16 plus that I'm misremembering, it's been a while. Just for clarity, as long as we're here, we don't have specifically banned topics on our server there's a little bit of confusion with that just that we do have like a running list of things that are no this is very obviously not safe for life content or we'll very quickly get there and that's why on our server there's a couple things we're like no if you start posting about lily some mods are probably going to be like so about that because we have a lot of people that are survivors from our community in fact Mm -hmm. Every single person that was in that bitch eating crackers video that talks shit about all of her uh, her former uh, friends slash victims. All of those people are my friends or at least have been. Good example of this is I was friends with Brit for a while and we're not anymore, sadly. But Sega sister I talked to on occasion, Witchy Lizzie is still on good terms with me and designed the channel art when we redid it. You, the other folks in that in that video, I think we're cool with. And Patrick Hart is literally my son. I've just adopted Patrick Hart. Patrick Hart literally contacts me and calls me mom. I've literally posted the clip from Hook saying, 
he is my son, he loves me dearly, and I will fight dearly for him. Let me be really clear. I, if I have to so hurt, search out like movie clips to tell people how much I care about you, I give a shit. Yeah, yeah. The point that I was I was going off of was more than sorry. <laughs> not quite where coffee went, but here we are. Uh, we just said our mods will generally check in and be like, "So hey, about that." Just because we do end up with either a, a lot of the people in the boat that Poppy mentioned, or b, people posting links who have encountered content and have shit around it and are just trying to figure out ways to deal with it. But we generally try to like keep that off the main page because it's really, really rough and it goes. Not safe for work very, very easily. But even on like a social level though, like as long as we're here, I'll say it now, but on a social level, we run into a lot of people from her community or who have left her community that are like, shit, I don't even know what I'm allowed to write anymore. Right. And they're like asking us about, is it okay to write something like completely harmless, like with teens or like young 20 somethings that were like, it's writing. Like you're not that old. The characters aren't that old. Like it's fine. Yeah, and, and again, one of the things to be very clear about, um, one of the videos in this list is about Patrick Hart, but I do, I want to be really clear that, like, nothing but love to Patrick Hart. I love Patrick Hart. He's a very, very good boy, and um, I just, I love him to death. Um, I would give that kid the world. This is the difference between how we, we, we sort of comport ourselves and how other content creators do sometimes, is that, like, we don't, we're really transparent about the way we interact with people. Like, are there people that are minors that have contacted me through DMs? Sure. And usually it's either because they're freaking out, they're suicidal, or because of the trans bills coming in, they're losing their shit. Nine times out of ten, though, in most of those cases, the person they go to is ZZ. Yeah. ZZ is the one that watches the server more than I do. I'm not in there as often because I'm working. And so a lot of times they go there and that's the thing. As far as the writing thing, we've talked about the idea that I don't want to police what's in people's heads. I don't care what you fantasize about. As long as it doesn't mm -hmm. have real world tangible effects, I don't give a shit. We, we want people to have the ability to explore themselves. And sometimes that means exploring dark things while also not causing harm in the world. That's our position, especially when it comes to writing and stuff, is that, again, the goal is making sure people have the ability to explore. And there are cases where exploring certain dark topics can be very helpful for people to deal with their trauma. So anyway, just wanted to give that caveat there and we'll continue on. He's the bad guy, instead holding out that everyone else is. It's hilariously sad, but I fear for the minors in her audience because she's still gross. Oh, and lest we not forget about the fanfic she wrote, I read them when I would have been a younger teen, and they were gross. Just Google Lily Orchard Stockholm, and you'll find info in it about Rainbow Dash adopting a child Scootaloo only to, well, yeah her. And no, the yeah isn't murder either. Oh, and because I thought it was a normal thing to do, because it was a normal thing on her blog, I sent some anon sexting sort of messages to her Tumblr. Some she responded to, but I can't find them anymore as I think she reset her Tumblr a few years ago. I would have been no younger than 14, no older than 16. So yeah, fuck Lily Orchard. Wouldn't care if she rots. She's disgusting, not just because of what happened to me, but I don't care to talk about all the drama relating to her. So in short, I sent sex to her when I was no older than 16 and they were public. I saw porn of her as a minor and I read some fucked up fan fiction she made because, well, I like Lily, might as well engage with her other content. Yeah, I want this fucker gone off all platforms more than anything. Okay. That pretty much covers that one. Moving on. With that noted, let's start with a recap of what Stockholm is in order to understand why it's so important. Stockholm is a series of fanfics written by Lily Orchard and Nintendo Gal 55 consisting of Stockholm, the first fanfic, followed by Valentine's Day, Twicentia, Limit, both parts 1 and 2, The Razzle Dazzle, The Dash Family, The Littlest Dazzle, and lastly, Illicit Disco, all of which were published during 2014 and 2015. The series is a mashup of Lily's other writing project, Tale of the Valkyrie, and Hasbro's My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, with many of its characters taken from the MLP show. However, the one we're interested in is Stockholm, the original. The fanfic largely follows three groups. We have Fluttershy and Intersex Rainbow Dash, we have Essentia, yes, that Essentia, and Twilight Sparkle, and lastly we have the Cutie Mark Crusaders, the CMC, consisting of Scootaloo, Sweetie Belle, and Apple Bloom, originally introduced as preteens, so 9 to 12 years of age, before being aged up to 13 and later 14. This is in spite of the fact that the events of the fanfic seem to take place over a span of a few months. This will become important later. The fanfic follows Shy and Dash as Shy leaves her current relationship to be with Dash, Essentia and Twilight as they try for a child in spite of Twilight being incredibly abusive. It's actually really interesting because I don't think I've ever seen that particular Ethel puppet. The horrified look at <laughs> Ethel puppet. I don't know how much they pull that out one, that one out, but I guarantee you it's going to get used a lot during this video. And the CMC as they begin their sexual exploration. And yeah, 
you can probably see where this is going. To be clear, I'm not going to cover the entire thing, nor is this our detailed literary analysis or set piece. I just want to summarize six chapters to give you a general idea of the nature of the fanfic and why it is as controversial as it is. <laughs> Chapter 7, Dateless When We Turn 16, It's molesting time! Oh. Has Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle talk about having sex around Dash, who offers them her bed as she and Fly leave the house. We then get an extremely graphic description of the girls, who, reminder, are 14, having sex. Sweetie Belle then tells Apple Bloom that she gets aroused when she sees her sister naked, because of course, this wouldn't be a Lily Orchard piece without incest. When Dash and Fly return, Dash realizes she's recorded the pair having sex, so, due to fears of being imprisoned, formats the drive. That's when Sweetie Belle comes down and hugs Dash, only to be prodded by Dash's erection. Lily has Sweetie Belle apologize to Dash, Dash talks about how lesbians don't tend to like women with penises, and Sweetie Belle tells Dash to give her wow. and Apple Bloom a call if Dash is still dateless when the pair turns 16. Chapter 7 ends with Dash discovering Sweetie Belle's underwear along with an accompanying note written by her, offering said underwear as a token of appreciation. Which that Dash is not how you open tokens keeps. of appreciation. Chapter 14, what I call Double Dash, has the CMC board trying to figure out what they should do, and since this is a Lily Orchard fanfic, the solution involves the three of them going back to their hideout, forming a polycule, and having a threesome. They then head over to Dash's house and tell her about what happened, what is this, at trans which point Twitter? Lily has Dash make a joke about drugging the three of them. Scootaloo discovers that Dash is intersex and goes on to laud her as the ultimate lesbian fantasy, as Dash lets the three know that they're welcome in her house any time. Oh my god. Sweetie Belle then tells the other CMC members to leave their underwear behind as a token for Dash, only to let slip that Dash fantasizes about raping them. This results in both Apple Bloom and Scootaloo feeling uncomfortable, particularly Scootaloo, who is currently in the process of being adopted by Dash, yet Sweetie Belle calms them down. Dash then graphically fantasizes about raping Scootaloo, whilst having Shy join in, with Scootaloo calling Shy her mummy. Chapter 20, oh, Sweetheart, God. Come Down Here, is a chapter in which Lily writes Sweetie Belle to be the one making a move on Dash, leading Dash to reach for emergency pills that apparently turn off a person's sex drive. I this read manga and manga Dash isn't this bad Scootaloo most of the time. Wake up with Shy, I'm so glad we didn't which, go yeah, through this ourselves. Which, yeah, Yet it's chapter 21, this is some one to talk, damage. that really takes things a step further in how fucked up this entire thing is. <laughs> After Scootaloo tells the CMC about what happened, not only do they brush <sighs> off what was done to her as a non-issue, but Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle proceed to pressure Scootaloo into having sex with them to make up for her almost cheating on them. Because she was molested. I think I said it best in my notes when I wrote, fucking shoot me. <laughs> Though, not to worry, okay. Scootaloo isn't the that only one That is the only time you've ever done a joke that made me laugh. Well done. Well done. Leaving, and it Sweetie might have been the squirrel boys. Trousers to stop her from tempting Dash. Notice the displacement of blame going on. It's not very subtle. Shy and the CMC then turn up at Dash's house to discover that, out of nowhere, Dash and Essentia are having a brawl, a fact that will also become relevant later. All right, we're going to give people a uh, yellow light on that one. People need a moment. Take a minute, breathe. Breathe. I know that stuff is rough. Take a minute. Rough on us, too. Not a um. fan. I know that was a lot to take in. Breathe, everybody. Take a breath. Now, a couple things to bring up in that. One is, what the fuck? Two, one of the things that at least we make claims about is that, again, I think that there are certain kinks that people can do as long as everyone is consenting adults. This writing is fucked because it is specifically not talking about any kind of, like, this is, this is talking specifically about essentially, like, Lolita levels of grooming, essentially MLP characters, something. There's a difference between writing something and then also releasing it as a large scale content creator. Like that's when you're at the level of, OK, let me go publish this thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And we get into some of the weird questions with how people interact with it. Well, and one thing I want to be really clear about, and this is going to be a thing for later, is when we have a discussion later, this will come up again because there is some connections to be made to this based on some of the information we've come across. That's all I'll say. I agree that it's objectively worse than, than Lolita. Um, I'm just using that as a free frame of reference. This is, this, is, this is Lolita if Lolita was on meth. <laughs> and then had ponies. I don't... I don't even know what the fuck to even do with that. Yeah, the uh, the My Little Pony fandom was very weird. Um, just as a note. Yeah. So 
There are two more videos left, and I believe one of them is about also Stockholm. We will skip that one because people are having a reaction. So I go, we'll go to Patrick, Hart, Patrick Hart's video. Like I said, there will be links in the stream if somebody feels like they need more context or wants to go hear the For original those videos. For who haven't seen it, Lily Orchard made a video talking about me, Lizzie, Brittany, and a few others that she has relatively public beef with. Yeah. Zena and Jess of TGT even made a video responding to it since Jess was featured as a topic. But it seems like Zena a lot of exist, folks I guess. seem to have forgotten okay. who I am in relation to Lily, which is frustrating because, well, I was the second person to come forward about Lily being sexually toxic, but our friendship was not a healthy one. The first of the people... In this is in no way to pull any any of the seriousness away from like uh, Patchy's um, story, but Patchy, your your son is adorable. I'm just gonna let you know that. I this this is I love everything about this. Uh, boy, femboys are amazing, and my son, you look wonderful. Anyway, continue. Forward about her toxicity was technically Brit. If you know Lily drama, you know who Brittany is. True. Brittany was a former friend of Lily in the era of her reign as Ballspawn, the same point in history where she was affiliated with Blake Diamond and during her budding rivalry with Josh Scorcher. Brittany explained a long time ago that, along with a friend believed to be a sock puppet named Tara Kelly, Lily had been sexually and emotionally coercive with her for a very long time. But I believe around 2018, after a conversation in Barrel was leaked to Kiwi Farms, I had to come forward and confirm that Lily and I had had a sexually involved affair. Because I was, and in many ways still am. Before I let Patchy finish that, I want to bring up something real quick. So the thing brought up about Brit, I've actually read those logs from Skype. So the situation that's being actually accused, the accusation that's being there, and I want to be really clear, all of this is accusations. I think Brit's good people, too. I just think that Brit is a zealot. Someone can I, be good in a zealot. Oh, yeah, I don't have any issues with Brit. I don't really know her that well, frankly. Yeah, if you ever took me, Thanagor, as thinking that Brit's not a good person, I don't know how you came to that conclusion. But my frustration is different than my assessment of her as a moral person. Brit was a friend of Lily's and a mutual friend named Tara. Tara was supposedly was a a sock puppet of Lily's that was sort of pushing for Lily, who was masculine presenting at the time and still going by her dead name, um, to try to hook up with Brit, a lesbian. And so essentially the argument being made is that this was a this was essentially Lily using a sock puppet to coerce a lesbian into being with a at the time presenting a masculine person. Um I've seen the, scri the, the screenshots of this. I've gone, I, I've gone over there myself. The Skype logs feel pretty solid. Um, I do think there is some really, really weird stuff about Tara, especially about the way that Tara just sort of got written out of Lily's life like a bad character, because it was. There's a lot of stuff that Tara claimed to be able to claim that, that she was doing that are really fucked. If this person actually existed, then that would be really, really bizarre. But it reads like about as bad as Stockholm fanfic. Let's let Patchy continue. An asshole. Constantly getting in fights on Twitter or Tumblr, getting in trouble, being incredibly obnoxious in streams. And I had an unhealthy level of yes man attitude. I was so intentionally oh. hurtful to strangers there, back then. I'm an idiot. And that's a habit I'm still learning to shut down. I was also so very desperate for Lily, Lizzie, and Zane to love me. So much so that when I found out Lily was a fan of my old friend Sketchy, I introduced them. Only for Sketchy and I to have to part ways when Lily and I fell out. But the fact that I was and am a bit of a shit gibbon doesn't make what happened to me okay. Because while I was friends with Lily, things escalated rather rapidly in private. It started with Lily casually mentioning goofy smut pinups and commissioning art from me as a way to help with my financial problems. And then there was a small chunk of time where Lily told me not to draw her at all. It felt weird. We stopped hanging out outside of her server for a while. No more calls, no streams. I didn't get invited to be around as much. 
I wondered if she even liked me anymore. So for those playing the home game, this is actually the opposite. This is the, the, the negative side of love bombing. Pour a bunch of care on a person, give them as much love and support as humanly possible. And then what happens is, is that you then withdraw it. And that sense of withdrawal, this exact thing that Patchy's talking about, is essentially the, the deprivation portion of it in social psychology. So love bombing literally pulls away from... So, okay, people in chat need to know what love bombing is. So love bombing is a psychologically manipulative tactic that is essentially where you pour a bunch of care onto a person. You're so great, you're so insightful, you're so wonderful. Cults do this. You walk in the door the first day and everyone's like, wow, you're so smart, you're so great. But the moment you say something that goes against the cult, everyone withdraws that care. And because humans are social animals, we feel very, very clearly when somebody pulls back on that care. It actually hurts a lot. It can really freak us the fuck out. And so, yeah, there is this tendency of pouring all this love on. Mm -hmm. This is the allegation, and I think this is very true. But basically, there's a ton of pouring this stuff on and then withdrawing it. So this this deprivation, this feels weird. It feels awful. It felt like she disconnected. She didn't like me anymore. This is the other side of love bombing. It's when the person has done something or gone against what your wishes are, and then you pull back all the care. I wouldn't say it's necessarily stonewalling. Um, stonewalling tends to be a different tactic in arguments. This is just the other side of love bombing. It's just the purpose of love bombing is to set this tendency up. It's the love withdrawal, like some people are saying in chat. Um, yeah, it essentially kind of leaves the other person like chasing and without support, so kind of feeling like decently empty. Yeah, and yeah, as uh, Kira put it in chat, it's cycles of extreme periods of attention and affection followed by inattention and withdrawal. So again, um, let's keep going. So when the calls and commissions came back, I did whatever she wanted. Yep. No matter how uncomfortable I got. Whatever she wanted, because you didn't want the, to, the you didn't want the care to pull away again. Well, and again, it's especially in this case, it wasn't just you know, emotional care, but also, you know, financial livelihood stuff, right? That was mentioned earlier, and I think that's especially worth noting that, no, this shit gets really messy when you are also, when someone is also involving somebody's livelihood. I also want to be clear, and I also am friends with Lizzie Orchard, who is Lily's former fiance. This is not the only person that was coerced into NSFW work that the person felt uncomfortable with. Lizzie was as well. This is a reoccurring pattern around artists around Lily, at least allegedly. So it's allegedly. something to keep in consideration that this is something that this has been brought up before. There was a several month time span of my friendship with Lily where she would commission non-consent and zoophilia porn. Wow. See, during our friendship, Lily would call with me almost daily outside of that hiatus that she had had. These calls would last for hours and were to talk about whatever was annoying Lily or whatever was on her mind. Explicit sketches of her and Lizzie's OCs. I'd do it. Sexually explicit anons, of course. Gangbang art, yes ma'am, whatever makes you happy. And because my household barely makes 5k a month now and made 3k back in 2017, and my fiancé back then was laid off six months out of the year, Lily would pay double, sometimes triple my asking price. It felt almost like a bribe. And what was weirdest was she always made sure that these requests and discussions never happened by text. Yep. Always in calls. Always in private. Never where people could see or where I could prove that they happened. The only witnesses were ever really Jesse or me. But I was doing things wrong. I was doing a lot of things wrong. Because Lizzie didn't know about any of it. I felt like I was helping Lily cheat on her. And my partner, Jessamine, knew about all of it and encouraged me to stop believing that what was happening between me and Lily was unhealthy. And she was right. Jesse and I already had a talk about a year or so ago about everything in earnest. And though she has told me that she doesn't see me as a bad person and she doesn't resent me, my wife did feel as if what happened between Lily and I was in fact infidelity on both ends. That I had cheated on my wife. 
I'm just going to say here, I'm obviously not in their relationship. I can't make those claims. Social manipulation is absolutely a thing. And being that this was coercive, the idea that this was on both ends. I'm not a huge fan of. That's all I'll say. I don't I don't agree with that psychologically. I don't agree with that clinically. I don't agree with that based on the information presented. Yeah, no, seeing here that it's definitely not how I would define any of that. That that is there are things analogous in both of our backgrounds that are similar to that. Just to clarify, love bombing isn't the same thing as having lower high points. I've seen people call them natural lows and highs of a relationship. No, they are not the same thing. They are and they are absolutely one hundred percent so um, a, a a different thing. They are very textually done is probably the biggest thing. And it is it tends to be a very sharp noticing, like the the person who's meant to be on the receiving end. No, you pick up real fast what you're not supposed to say. Yeah, there are some other things that potentially sound similar uh, in psychology. But again, this is uh, something that you see in larger groups, especially so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really sad that Patchwork went through this. This is, I, I'm not thrilled with that. Um, I'm not, not thrilled with that framing either. But I, I'll respect that. That's how they framed it in their, how both of them framed it in their relationship. I was drowning in the squick and discomfort of it all, waiting eagerly for Jesse to get home from work so I could hang up and have an excuse to run away. I swallowed down the discomfort. I did whatever she asked of me even being in her podcasts and streams whenever requested. I smiled, and I waved, and even took the abuse when she would troll and grief me in front of all her fans on live streams until I cried, a moment now immortalized by fan art. I was helping her. I was such a good friend, that's what she would tell me. Lily wouldn't lie to me, right? She helped me during the Toon drama. She made a fundraiser when I lost my SSI and disability assistance. She was my friend. Right? Wrong. I was codependent. I needed her the way addicts need a fix, and it was damaging me and everyone around me. Eventually, Lily and I had a rather public argument about a baby strangling joke she made in her server that led to me leaving. For about two weeks after I left, we didn't really talk to each other. We stayed out of each other's way for the most part. I decided to take care of my feud with Josh Scorcher in private, since the war of attrition we had been engaging in was getting neither of us anywhere good. We came to a calm, comfortable conclusion. Both of us apologized, and we parted ways. The day after I announced my feud with Josh was over, I woke up to Lily having blocked me literally everywhere ghosting me completely. I didn't even get a courtesy explanation until Sketchy looked for one for me. I had to ask someone else to tell me what was going on, and even then I never got a full explanation. And I spent a few weeks lamenting the situation, made a couple of posts venting about my feelings, but remaining vague so as not to try to start any fights. Because it's my fucking blog, and as long as it doesn't violate TOS, I can post whatever I damn well please. The stress and anger built up. I started drinking more. I started binging and smoking a lot. And I had a breakdown. A violent one. I sent Lily a series of emails berating her for abandoning me after claiming to be my friend. I lashed out. And I'll admit, I was a dick during that conversation. I sought out to hurt her and even if I was inebriated and high, it, that's not the fault of the drugs. That's the fault of me being petty and lashing out in pain when I knew that wasn't the right thing to do. So, yeah. By the way, if anyone wants to send love to Patrick Hart on Twitter, please do so. Or I guess X is being called now, but I refuse to call it that. But send Patrick Hart love. I'm actually probably going to commission Patrick Hart. And I just want an image of my persona hugging his big ass hyena hugging that cat. You're caught up for the most part. That's what's been going on. Now there's some other stuff. And uh, we got some shit to cover. So I don't remember exactly how far back, but there was a point where something came to light and it was very interesting. Specifically, a person kind of came out of the woodwork. We should probably talk about it. For those who don't know, 
Lily is the middle child of three kids. Cameron, Lily, and Courtney. Recently, Courtney Pete has come out and started talking about her experience. So before I open this up, I want to be clear about a couple things. Trigger warning for transphobia with the caveat that this is an alleged abuse victim talking about their abuser. Take these content warnings seriously. And obviously content warning for incest or anything else that people might find triggering. So be careful with yourselves, okay? So for those who can't read this, these were posted, I believe, if Thanagar will remind me, these were posted online to the hated website. Is that correct? Oh, the, yeah, this was from Facebook, but I believe it was posted on the place of things. I'm going to read this by trying not to misgender or dead name Lily. If I make a mistake, I do apologize to Lily. I am here to talk about these allegations. I am not here to misgender or dead name her. Lily is a pedophile who lies about everything my brother or sister. Uh, this, there's a lot of no periods here. Uh, dear, get periods. Lily is a pedophile who lies about everything. My sister never had cancer to begin with. Stop falling for her lies. She's only trans to get unfettered access to unsupervised youth to sext and groove them. She molested me my whole childhood, and I hope she does get cancer and dies. Sorry to hear you fell for, uh, for, for her bullshit. I have not spoken to my family in a decade. Get your facts straight before bothering people. I'm not her sister. I, I, I'm not her sister. I have. She has no sister. Sorry, misgender. Um, Gleiss, we'll talk about that in a little bit, okay? I want to get through this and then we should talk about that, but I appreciate the thing. I'll be waiting for the apology for shoving my own trauma back in my face whenever you're ready. Yes, Lily is a pathological liar. Nothing she says is true. She's, she's never had cancer. She preys on children and has her whole life. I was her first victim. Um, the neighborhood autistic kids were the next ones. Again, I want to be clear, these are allegations. She has been in three different psychiatric facilities as a child to young adults because she can't control herself. She had no major accidents and no illnesses aside from mental ones. Don't believe a word she says, and for your own sake, sake of safety, stay away from her. She writes child porn fanfic about what she tried to do to me as a kid. This is the reference to Stockholm. Just don't read her blog she's hurt enough people. Three months ago, she was caught sexting a 16-year-old. She's 31. This is reference to the Essence of Thought video. This is not the person you want to be advocating for or anything, or for anything. Do not look up to her. She is a monster. Her victims are just now coming out of the woodwork. That's why she's faking cancer. She's even faking being a person of color as my mother's children, all three of us, do not in any way qualify as native. We're part of the second generation cutoff. I'm sorry for lashing out with some of my messages. i am just been trying to take this monster down for a while now, and I guess I got triggered. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. You didn't know and really couldn't have. You shouldn't be sorry. I'm the, sor I'm the one who's sorry for lashing out. And no, my mother hides the crimes of both of her, both of these children. So no cops were ever, invo ever, ever involved. Lily, or blank as I know her, had every excuse made for her because of whatever diagnosis she had at the time as we were kids, and the meds changed every few months. Her last diagnosis was uh, at Asperger's one, and she's been milking that since she was 17. I'm just thankful you've been exposed to her for so long that you haven't been preyed on. To put her into perspective, she wrote Stockholm, the MLP fanfic, and that Stockholm was about me. I grew up with her. I was there when she tried to coerce me into incest. It's not fake. She didn't even like MLP until I did. Used to tell me I was exactly like Meg from Family Guy, then write porn about her. I assume this is a question of how old, 16. Let me put it to you this way. I had created a list when I was young of worrying behaviors that made me afraid of this person and gave them to my father who took them to her psychiatrist because Lily, whatever you want to call them, had been in therapy since they were seven, and her psychiatrist, after seeing the note and the list was wor of worrying behaviors, told my father under no circumstances that I was to be left alone with this person because they were a danger to me because she was sneaking into my room, stealing my underwear, and molesting me in my sleep. This went on until I, was, I bought a lock for my door 
which I couldn't do until I had a job because my parents wouldn't buy me one. Lily spent her childhood. I want you to notice, by the way, the pronouns and name are changing as this goes on. Okay, just notice that the difference between someone being triggered and not believing their 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 alleged attacker versus this. So just want you to notice you're, you're seeing a change in language. And no, I don't know the how Canadian government does that kind of identification, so I'm not entirely sure how all that works. I can only go by what is told to me here. Lily spent her childhood and much of her adolescent years while I was living under the same roof as her, either molesting me in my sleep or trying to coerce me into incest to the point where I had to threaten her life if she looked at me the wrong way because it was getting that bad. She wrote Stockholm depicting everything she wanted to do to me. She made the, the, game, the games afterwards depicting everything she wanted to do to me and I know this because she used to tell me these things. She used to tell me what she wanted to do to me. Considering the fact that the only media she talks about are children's shows and the children media is very worrying, the fact that she's trans is a, again, I don't agree with this, but trans is a ploy to get unfettered access to LGBTQI youth because they are some of the most neglected children in the world, desperate for acceptance, and she uses that to groom them. I've been trying very hard to get in contact with her victims, that have come out and I've reached out to people who make videos about her and talk to her victims because I'm trying to get hard proof to put this person behind bars. Nothing will be done about what happened to me as, uh, as we're 19 months apart and it would be chalked up to a childhood mischief, but I'm lost in a sense as I don't know how to reach out to her victims, but I'm trying. Um, so why don't we do this and just take a minute and just look at the cute bunny. This was the original version of ZZ's Fursona. We're going away from this version, but it's still super cute. I still cute. like this one though. I like it a lot. Take a minute. You got a bunny? Cute bunny. Oops, all lewd bunnies. Twisty, it's your favorite. <laughs> you totally got to come out now. Yeah, we, uh, we went down to like 387 for a minute there, like from 400, so like... Yeah, I know this stuff is rough, guys, and I, I guess just trying to make sure you're aware of like how how difficult this stuff is, because this is sort of us trying to be as cohesive as possible. And we're not done yet. Not even not even close, which probably get through these quickly. Yeah, I'm, quick. try, I'm trying. I'm trying to, but they take time to read. I also want to make sure we're we're being careful with people when they call yellows. Yeah, I was doing a thing, Patchy. Patchy, by the way, Zizi and I want to commission art from you. I would like a picture of my fursona hugging your hugging your your cat sona. Tell me how much that is and how do I make it happen? And then I'll get one of both. I'll get one of me just hugging you, and then I'll get one of both me and Zizi's sona when it's done hugging you. I want to throw money at you because you're my son and I love you. Aww. Ongoing. Yep, her victims are coming out now that, now that she has cancer. Convenient. And again, words of a pathological liar. She used to break blood vessels in her face to claim our dad punched her. Cancer is not out of her forte. If you knew anything about my childhood and family, you wouldn't believe a word of it, but it's all true. To put it bluntly, my, mo my mother's oldest son had sexually assaulted me for years, and he shared a room with Lily, Whenever you, whatever you want to call them. So I wouldn't put it past my abuser to have also abused uh, abused her. I don't forgive or care, but she was probably molested as a kid too. She was probably sexually assaulted by her, her older brother too. Oh, wow. Uh, Pluvius, thank you so much for the nine tier one subs. We come from a very messed up family and that kid falls right in line. And uh, she took off from the trailer park at 17 and never looked back. So these are some more of the conversation pieces. One second. And that's one piece. You cannot call yourself a person of color if you are part of a second generation cutoff. My mother does not qualify, does not have native status, not as long as I've known her. She only qualifies as 6'2 status, and that's only if her father actually had status. My father is full bred uh, Newfoundler. 6'2 two, status, no status equals no status children. All of my mother's children are Irish, British, Nordic, non-status white kids, despite what she wants to be true. Jodine E. Pete, i.e. their mother, so your uh, PDF file trans daughter, I'm going to leave out the other words here, they are transphobic, but I'll leave them out. Lily is faking cancer. Still have a good relationship with her? Again, this is transphobic rhetoric. So my, ped my PDF file trans, that should be sister, is now faking cancer. Hope you get real cancer, bitch. Hashtag siblings too. Whatever parent needs to know about sibling sexual abuse and trauma, April 15th, 2023. 
So that's that. And then let me see if I have anything else. Oh, and this was posted online. Here is Courtney. She's a cutie. Mm hmm. So Courtney kind of did some stuff that wasn't great. The transphobia wasn't wonderful, but this is new information and does kind of support the stuff that happened to Patchwork, the stuff that happened to Lizzie, the stuff that happened that's been alleged by all of these people. The reason why we had you go through and see those chipmunked videos of Essence of Thought, again, apologize, apologies, Ethel, um, don't at me, um, <laughs> is that uh, the reality is, is that we need you guys to understand that this is the ongoing discussion around Lily. There's her community, there's her videos, and then there's all of this stuff. I want to be clear that in no way am I justifying any of Courtney's transphobia. But I will also say that I have had several conversations, as has Xena, with Courtney, and I don't think Courtney's a transphobe. In fact, these days, after some several conversations with yours truly, these days, Courtney is going by, I believe, I believe pansexual and agender. Might have trans someone have that effect on people. Anywho, so having these conversations, we learned a lot of stuff that was really interesting. We also made a new friend and we'd mm -hmm. like you to meet them. Yeah. So what we'd like to do is introduce Courtney Orchard. Hey, love, you are live. Give it a second. I said, now we're in the right one. Is that better? Oh, that's so fucking good. All right. So let's, oh, let's, let's get started. Let's so take a breath. We got to get back to serious stuff soon. And... <sighs> All right. Yes, unfortunately. Lily, we know yeah. you're watching, by the way. I hope you're molding. Anyway. Hey, big sis. It's been a while. Um, <laughs> we're, just uh, okay, so... an we're just giving an alleged assault victim a platform to talk about what happened to them. You should be fully for this, Lily. It's true. I witnessed her the abuse she went through as well. But you had asked me. I guess you had asked me. Yeah, where I said, where do you want to start? Like, what do you feel feels important? Because we covered you covered a lot in those Facebook messages. But I guess where do you want to start? Well, probably on the NATO thing. Um, the only reason that I like the messages had so much to do with genealogy in it was because Lily likes to lean so heavily on her quote unquote native gene. Which, for background information, she gets that quote from our mother because she's been spouting that all her life. Like, our mother has this weird fetish for Native American culture. And it's Native American. It's not indigenous because our grandfather is American and his, grand his mother was supposedly Cherokee, which is the story in the family. There's no proof. There's no documentation, which only matters. I, I, I get it in a sense of legality, but that legality also matters in a sense of claims. Like it's easier to get accepted by the nation if you already have legal status. That goes for Canada and the States. But so Hank was American. So the only native, the only indigenous or whatever that's in our family is, is American. So it's native American. It's not even indigenous Canadian. And because our mother just has this fetish for it, she passed it on to both of her children. Like Cameron is very much like he's so deep in the native fetish that he went and had children with an indigenous girl on a reserve just so that they can be like, look, we're native now, but we're not. We're white. We're so white. We were raised Christian in a Newfoundlander household under Newfoundlander heritage. Our parents were raised Christian. Their parents were raised Christian. Not even Hank grew up under a Cherokee heritage. So like, it's not even passed down in the family, let alone the genetics. So just full stop, we are white. Lillian Valerie Turkelson, I refuse to dead name you if you're watching this. Hello, I'm besties with your sister. <laughs> Trans your sister and flirt with her often. I'm just saying. Lily, uh, it's true. At, at this point, I've win this. I've won this war. <laughs> so, so you're just saying, yeah. Xena's just adorable and helps with stuff. Like, someone has a tech issue. Xena swoops in. There's a problem oh. with. There's a problem with like, uh, relationships. Xena swoops in. Like again, I'm I'm way less helpful than people give credit to. But anyway, so so the so the na so the native claims are in your mind bunk. Yeah, they're 100 percent bunk. Got it. Like. Even if the quote-unquote genetics are there, none of the traditions or heritage was passed through the family. 
we in no way grew up as Native American kids. We grew up as white Christian Newfoundlanders. Like we're honestly closer to uh, Eric the Red in possible genealogy than we are anything Native American. No, that's fair. All right, so that's that's kind of there, Patchy. I am mutually claimed Cherokee. My people do not claim Lily. No, and um, Red, there is hi, our Lily, aunt. I'm besties with your sister. <laughs> Yeah, lots of people are. So now, and Lily likes to bring up our aunt as um, an excuse to why she is quote unquote native, um, because our aunt um, on our mother's side, she's our mother's oldest sister. She is the only one in the family who's claimed by the nation, but that's because she dove headfirst into the heritage at a very, very young age. Like she devoted her life to respecting the heritage. She has furs gifted to her by chiefs. She has uh, eagle feathers and headdresses gifted to her by chiefs. She was an advocate for the for for native and indigenous populations for a long time. Like she's claimed by the nation because she respects and follows the traditions and always has. And Lily likes to use that as her gateway. Oh, my two-spirit aunt, which I'm not sure how she identifies, so I can't say if she's two-spirit or not, but she is claimed by the nation. And she's the only one in the family who is. No, fair enough. Okay, so that's... She's also a lesbian, so she's in the LGBTQ club as well. Sweet. That's cool. Um, Based aunt. Um, As far as... So that's the native claims. So I guess, like, we had a pretty sizable conversation with you about... I guess, like... A pretty the whole family history yeah well we have well, up on screen right now i have sure. the whole family history from age seven onward um and i guess like as far as you know the different things we're dealing with here you know what where you know where do we want to start from as far as the fam the rest of the family stuff we'd probably have to start with cameron because that's kind of the antithesis for a lot of it because there was the stuff that deals with Cameron, and then there was everything that spiraled, that kind of spiraled after that. Okay, so the things that happened with Cameron. Why don't we uh, get into some of the family stuff, however you want to, uh, however you want to go. Uh, all right, I mean, I'll start with it explaining to everybody who Cameron is, because Lily doesn't... She doesn't portray anything about the family properly. Cameron is uh, my mother's oldest son. She's not mine and Lily's father's son. Okay, so Cameron is our half-brother, but he's the oldest child. So Cameron's older than me by six years and older than Lily by five, because we're about a year apart. And my father only raised Cameron for probably three years before he was removed from the house. Uh, Cameron was a violent, violent child. He was like three years old and ripped a door off its hinges. Our mother nicknamed him Bam Bam because of that. And he was Jesus. the kid's, yeah, he's built like a gorilla and always has been. Like he's really top heavy, but really, really little on the bottom. It's kind of funny. And he's got very much the mentality of a gorilla. He's just very, very aggressive. And like you breathe the wrong way and this kid would resort to violence. And because he had the weight and the size behind him, he would go after adults and be able to do damage. Um, being our mother's golden child, she didn't make Cameron do anything. Cameron had no discipline whatsoever from the time he was born. And whenever my our, our father decided to try and step in and be a father to Cameron, Cameron would get violent and attack our father. So he had our mother, basically forced our mother. He said, either you're calling or I'm calling, but CPS is removing this kid for violence. So they called CPS one day after a blow up when I was six. And Cameron was removed from the house and he never came back. Now, unbeknownst to my parents at the time, uh, Cameron had been, trigger warning here for everybody, this is, this is going to get really heavy. Uh, Cameron had been raping me for years. Uh, it probably started, I have memories of it starting at about three. Could have been younger. Um, he'd coerced me into playing house and it never stopped until he remo was removed from the house. Nobody knew that's what was, what was stopping it because nobody knew it was happening. But that's what happened. When Cameron got removed from the house and my rape at his hands stopped, um, my molestation at Lily's hands started, as well as a lot of my symptoms of abuse started coming out. Um, a lot of signs that really went un, uh, unnoticed. Like, I think I started public, publicly masturbating when I was like four years old, so even before Cameron was removed. Nobody clocked onto that. Um, I wet the bed until I was like 14, 15 years old almost. Nobody clocked onto that. Uh, I used to have this irrational fear of my bedroom door ever being closed at any time of the day for any reason or night. 
nobody ever clocked on. Like, I'd have a full-out panic attack if you closed my door. Nobody noticed. Jesus. <sighs> yeah, yeah, the joys. Well, because Cameron was my mother's golden child, so when, is he, when he was removed from the house, um, she focused on him and only him, pretty much. And then Lily was born my father's golden child because Lily was his firstborn child. And I'm going to just say this briefly just because it, it just touches on the dynamic in my parents' brains. Um, Lily was born my father's firstborn son. And the only reason I say that is not to misgender her. It's because he had the man, like he being my father had the mentality that this is my firstborn son. This is the, the legacy of my name and everything. So, so he had all of that kind of emotional backing to their relationship. A lot of expectations, whereas, it sounds like. Yes, but also a lot of forgiveness, you know, a lot of a leeway because he was, you know, the goal a bit. Mm. I slipped there, my bad. It's okay. It's okay, you caught no it. No worries. You're good. Because she was his golden child, his firstborn, and that meant something, whereas I was just the daughter. And, and being my parents' daughter was vastly different to being their son. And that's the only reason I bring it up. Mom had her for a golden child. Dad had his golden child. And then there was Courtney. <laughs> Just kind of there watching it all. That was fun. See, I remember um, us talking in DMs about, like, how sexist your parents were and how much, like, they really harped on those lines, especially hard. Um, there's a lot of and stuff they, that they backed with their, over the years that they backed with, oh, well, you're the boy, you're the girl, you're the this. So that explains it. They they very much did, um, cause Lily likes to, likes to run the narrative that, um, she wasn't allowed to hit me because she was, um, AMAB. And while that was true, our parents did give her that rhetoric of she wasn't allowed to hit me because she was AMAB. They also told me, but never to Lily's face, but they told me I was not allowed to hit Lily because I was significantly bigger than her. Like Lily was maybe, you know, 80 pounds soaking wet. I was like 160 pounds at 13 years old. I'm like five, nine. So whereas she wasn't allowed to hit me because she was AMAB, I wasn't allowed to hit, to hit her because I could do serious damage. It didn't matter. We both hit each other. We were siblings. We were a year apart. We squabbled. Um, but we, yeah, when we were seven, um, roughly like Lily was, was seven. I was six when Cameron was removed. And that's when a lot of Lily's problems start really started. Like um, up until seven, she was a normal kid, to be quite honest. She was like hyperactive, yes, probably had ADHD, but it's hard to tell that in a six-year-old. But she was a normal kid, and we were best friends. Like, I don't think my parents have um, a single picture of me under the age of four without her in it. Because she was just glued to my side or I was glued to hers. My first words were boy in reference to her because I couldn't say her name. And like, she was a normal kid, and we were best friends and everything, and something happened and she just she just snapped like on a molecular level this kid just snapped and just started freaking out and i think the freak out started at school if i remember correctly um which kind of lines up a little bit with the narrative she says that she was molested or um touched by a teacher a resource teacher and whereas she never actually specifically said those words because we were like seven, she wouldn't have had those words. The only time she was in resource was when she was seven. And that's around the time she used to freak the hell out was when she had to go to resource. She would like literally just have the worst meltdown. She would take off from school property, lose her mind when people brought her back. And that's when her parents started bringing her to the, um, the doctors. And honestly, doing a lot of thinking on it, I think she really was being touched by a teacher and just did not have the words to say. Like I used to tell my mother, I didn't like playing house with Cameron. And because what she didn't know is what I was trying to convey. I don't like having sex with Cameron. She would tell me, Oh, it's fine. You know, big brothers are supposed to play with their little sisters. Uh, not all big brothers play house with their sisters. You should be consider yourself lucky. Just go play house with your brother. So it's very likely that Lily named the same game that was being played on her and someone just brushed it off because they didn't know what she was saying. But she never, unfortunately, outright said so and so was touching me. But a lot of her behavior started around them. So I really think that it happened. If not, Cameron did something because they used to share a bedroom. So the doctor visits and everything started at about seven. 
Um, we had already been to family therapy at that point because our parents had a bit of a strained marriage with Cameron being the problem child he was. So we had done family therapy for a while for that, but then Cameron was removed. So we just kind of stopped and our parents just kind of gave up, I guess. But they put us back into it around the time Lily started freaking out. And I say it was family therapy. Pause real quick. Pause yes. real quick. We're having issues with the stream. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on. Yes, I just had to run in for a phone charger. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. Do you need a break or anything, Courtney, or bathroom or snacks? No, or... I'm... Okay. Good. Looks like we're back. I don't know what that fucking problem was. Maybe it was Vosh sabotaging our stream. So the last time we left off before the mm -hmm. stream, the, that we had to restart the stream, was that you were talking about um, how Lily, like, basically one, one day was uh, a regular kid, and then the next day like was just absolutely uh you know completely like damaged and, spawn, really. and then this continued this started becoming a regular trend where L lily was regularly having um from your perspective was having regular mental health issues yeah and i like it was to the point where like she would take off at school or have a meltdown at school and they would come pull me out of class to help calm her down or <laughs> find her and bring her back to school property oh wow Oh. Yeah, so like it wasn't just like, oh, I heard about it or I saw it. No, I was directly involved in it. Um, even her early therapy sessions, because again, we were really close when we were little. Um, mm -hmm. Her early therapy sessions, I used to sit in with her and we used to play with the toys together while the therapist talked to her because I kept her calm. These are my socks, by the way. I think it was at family therapy. Yes, yeah. family therapy. Yeah, it's seven. So, yeah, family therapy started, and then Lily quickly got her own psychologist. Uh, she actually had a team of medical people that, like, for a good decade, she had a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a therapist, a, and a social worker. And I think they that's when they first, like, diagnosed her with ADD. That was the first thing. They're like, well, she may have ADD. It's maybe this. Let's put her on this medication. And that's when the medication started. Got that it. Was, yeah, that was a fun time. Uh, like, I don't even remember. Like, I don't know what they put her on at first because I was too young to specifically remember drug, same, drug names. But I, it's, it's, it's important for everyone to understand that I knew everything that happened in this household from way too young of an age. Um, Lily and my father would start getting into it at about six, seven really is when she started to pop off. And these, these two would get into screaming matches and these screaming matches would last hours and have different rounds where they would separate and calm down and then go right back into it. And usually over the stupidest things like do the dishes, meltdown, screaming match, uh, do your homework, meltdown, screaming match, go to school, meltdown, screaming match, like the littlest things, you name it. And every time they had their screaming matches, Whenever there'd be a break in the round or they would just stop, I would run into Lily's room and console her and calm her down and try and figure out what the problem was. Because in my little six-year-old mind, I'm like, well, they're just too angry to get the right words out. That's all that this is. I can explain it to both of them and everything will be fine. So I would, and it became a, a, a big pattern of me doing that. They would get into screaming matches. I would go find out from Lily what her problem was, go explain that to my father in a calm way, find out what my, pro my father's problem was, and then go explain that to Lily in a calm way and get them to fucking, like, I'd basically mediate them from, like, the age of six and up. Fuck him, I. Fuck him, fuck you, bitch. So when we last left off, um, there was an entire mental health team that was working with Lily. Yes. Oh, God. Hang on. Let me get back to my notes here. Um, oh, yeah. So I was also explaining the just the family dynamic because I literally knew absolutely everything in this household. Um, if I wasn't there to witness it, my parents either talked about it around me or directly to me because my parents never treated me like their child. They, <laughs> excuse me, they only ever treated me like, um, more like a roommate, really. Like, yeah, yeah, remember you telling me you were basically like the negotiator people. for everybody. Yeah, like I, I did the, I did the mediating between them because 
I was six years old, I figured, oh, everyone's just too mad. No, it was so much worse. <laughs> but um, so I would I would go and console Lily and I sat in for a lot of her earlier therapies. And right from the get go, Lily had a habit of saying things that just weren't true. Like she would wait till her parents weren't around and she was alone with me and the psychiatrist or the therapist or whoever's turn it was that time and would say things like our dad's punching her in the face when he flat out wasn't like that just didn't happen. Um, something that did happen, the man like, like, don't get me wrong, the man was physically abusive. He sp- he believed in spanking. Uh, I only got spanked once as a kid because I only ever got caught once. Um, Lily not so much and he used to spank Lily probably until she was about 14 or 15 years old which is absolutely fucking ridiculous and what started out as like normal typical spanking that people would expect to be to happen you know it's like one swat whatever because they're like three and you're just getting their attention not to defend spanking but no this was a 300 plus pound man on top of like a 90 pound child and he would pull her pants down and wail on her for good three or four minutes and then scream and yell at her while she's bent over his leg and then wail on her again and scream and yell at her again and because I was conditioned to under to believe spanking was a thing, I didn't see that at the time as abuse, so I never spoke out about it. Um, I just thought it was stupid that, like, if she's 15, up to 15 years old, and it's not working, why are you doing it? And mm. nobody else at the time viewed that as abuse either. Like, you got to remember this is, uh, I was born in 93, Lily was born in 92, so this was about, two, like, 98, 99, 2000s spanking wasn't considered abuse then especially not large scale and especially not out here Uh, and i say out here being nova scotia um growing up i had i witnessed cops explain to my mother how she can legally beat her child because that was kind of a thing you could do so the the spanking wasn't considered abuse but she would outright lie about things that just weren't happening jesus and yeah, it was it was fun. Well, well, the, the, what sucks about it is is that what you're describing is a phenomenon where, like, Lily was basically lying, you know, basically constructing all these stories that, you know, to get to get everybody in trouble. But what it did was inadvertently cover up all of the actual abuse that was happening. Yeah, like you, and you, the- you guys were being incredible. Like, there's a couple of people in chat who mentioned it, but like, yeah, there was some, there was some, some. Uh, parentification there was definitely some emotional incest like there's a lot of like stuff that was done there that just is absolutely abusive and yet that kind of gets obfuscated because there's all these false allegations of you know my dad punched me kind of thing yeah and that was also uh predecessor or pre- preceded by cameron before Cameron got removed from the house, Cameron liked to say, like to mark himself up and tell people that our father hit him. So there's, there already was a history of false allegations and proven false allegations against my father. So it didn't help her case that she was lying about things, especially when she would lie about things that didn't happen, but keep her mouth shut about the things that did happen. Well, cause it made her essentially an accomplice, right? Like she basically was lying, making these lies up to, to get people in trouble. But the problem is, is because they kept coming out, like, yeah, no, it's like in some ways that becomes a kind of accomplice because you, rather than like bring up actual things that are happening, you're bringing up false things, which then kind of points away from your parents and kind of obfuscates what they're doing. No. And I mean, I never spoke out about a lot of it either because I was relatively conditioned as a child. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and run with Lily's narrative of like, oh, I was just so much smarter than everybody else. No, I was just exposed to a lot. So I was made to understand things too quickly which led to me uh, pitying my parents like at like to to an internal like such an internal degree that I had convinced I'd essentially decided I am not going to be a problem child because they couldn't handle another problem child. I saw what Cameron did to them. I saw what Lily was doing to them. And it was just, no, it stops here. I will not be the problem child. And I literally became the perfect kid in everybody's eyes. Like my, I grew up and my friends' parents would be literally, literally look at my friends and be like, why can't you be like Courtney? Lily often heard all her life. Why can't you be like Courtney? Because understanding my parents and what they were going through led me to pity them. And I just decided it wasn't going to happen. 
You weirdly so enough took on the, the the older kid syndrome, even though like you were the youngest. Yeah, I, it's it's weird. I somehow I'm the I have all the dismissal of being the youngest child, all the expectations of being the eldest daughter, simply because I was the one that was born the daughter. So in my parents' mind, that that really is all that matters. Um, my parents are actually like super, just not good people. Um, my mother used to say to me growing up, I would rather you bring home a black man than a woman. Wow. Jeez. And her sister is a lesbian. I, I hate both of I hate that both of those options were a th- right? a thing. Right? Like either is the lesser of the two evils. Like that's that's that just shows you what she thinks about black people and about lesbians. Yeah, there's when nothing good about any of that. <laughs> no, no. True, true. Yeah. Um now my mother my mother is a kind of weird creature because like my mother is dumb as rocks, like full stop. She's just dumb as rocks. She is gullible beyond all hell. She will believe anything you tell her as long as it doesn't come from my mouth. And like she doesn't have a backbone. She doesn't have a sense of logic. She's just literally <coughs> dumb as rocks. And I'm not trying to be mean about it. It just it is the truth. Like her mother had convinced her that because her mother, my grandmother, uh, fell down a flight of stairs when she was eight months pregnant and then gave birth to my mother, apparently my mother's face, like her whole skull, was caved in to like her nose. And then apparently they sent her home and molded her face. My grandmother molded her face back out. And my mother touted this story as fact for her whole life. Oh, I've seen the pictures, Courtney. Where's the pictures, mom? I burnt them. Well, gee, that's a little convenient. Like just just as an ad, just to let everybody know how smart this woman is, she firmly believed that that actually happened. What the fuck? Oh, geez. Yeah. I oh, I spent so many years arguing with her. Just 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 the brain damage alone. First of all, baby's bones are not soft and malleable. Matt, she used to tell me, "Oh yeah, baby's bones are soft. You can you can shape them." No, they shift because they're not fused at the top. They're still solid. They're still bone. Your your mom doesn't sound like the sharpest tool in the shed. Like dumb as rocks. Dumb as rocks. <laughs> um, she uh, she had a firm belief that. I'm going to preface this by saying I don't mean to offend anybody who does believe in Ouija boards. Just personally, I don't believe that the Hasbro brand Ouija board is a thing other than a game by Hasbro. Uh, my mother believes differently. Specifically the Hasbro one, because I'm like, Hasbro's not making occult tools. It's just not happening. <laughs> so I wasn't allowed to have one. And then I wanted one just because I wasn't allowed to have one. And so, you know, can't have one in the house. And my parents had a... Um, a water bed that I helped my father rebuild the frame of. And I, and I pitched it to my mother after we built the frame, rebuilt the frame of this water bed. Uh, what if I had put a Ouija board under there? <laughs> what if, what if I just, I just plopped one in while we were putting it together? And she's like, I would know if you've done that, Courtney. And I'm like, okay, so tell me if I did it. And she lost her mind for a good week and a half going, did you put one under there, Courtney? Tell me if you put one under there. I was like, woman, I thought you could tell me. And now, uh, no. woman for me, woman for <laughs> me was a term of endearment for my mother like even when we were on good terms and got along i called her woman as a term of endearment she called me little girl or because we're newfie i'd call her mother uh it's just a newfie it's just newfie slang for mother um so yeah it was just woman i thought i thought you know you told me you told me yourself you could feel if there was one in this house so tell me if there's one under your bed uh, of course there wasn't one under her bed but that's she's so smart she's such the quickest wit so your dad basically covered for all of the abuses. Your mom was dumb as rocks and your siblings were either abused and made abusive or were just abusive out the gate. Yeah. Now, honestly, thinking back, there's given what Cameron did to me, there's there's no doubt in my mind that something happened to him early in his life. Given my mother wasn't with my father for the first. You're talking about Cameron. Yes. Make it sure. So yeah, did something happen to Cameron early? Okay. I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't know for sure, but I know she lived, my mother lived in Toronto with Cameron. She lived in Oklahoma with her father with Cameron and then back in Newfoundland with Cameron. And my mother, of her own description, this is what she told me her my whole life. My mother was a whore when she was younger. So I don't know what kind of men she had around Cameron. 
but I honestly fully believe something had to have happened to him for him to do what he did to me, because not only did he do what he did to me, but around the same time he was doing that to me, he was caught with another little girl my age. Mm -hmm. And I know this because my mother was talking about it with her friends, like while I was sitting in her lap, she was talking about how they caught Cameron with a little girl my age with her pants down and still nobody connected the dots, which was great. Um, I forgot where I was going with this. Great. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. So so Cameron just showed a pattern of behavior that couldn't have been like that just doesn't come naturally to a 12 year old. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. Oh, it, it sounds like something it, it I would say again, I'm not psychoanalyzing anyone, but I would say that that goes along with what my experience would be is that. Yeah, something probably happened to Cameron, and that seems to have spread through the rest of the family. And again, if your mom was not great about choosing particular adults to be around um when he was younger then that would make sense why you know you and lily were probably targets um though it seems like you and lily uh, kind of reacted differently to it um it took vastly different paths in life well see i had i had um actually suppressed a lot of my uh my trauma like until i was probably about 18 um I was I had myself convinced that the memories I have of Cameron assaulting me were just nightmares because I have really, really vivid dreams. Like I remember almost every single dream that I have in very great detail. And it's always been like that since I was a kid, including bad dreams. So I had myself convinced that like, no, that didn't happen. That's just a nightmare I had because I mean, my brother would do that to me, would he? Um. So like in all honesty, I didn't even have to start dealing with any of that until I was probably about 18 because that's when just, I don't even know what happened. I had ended up in Montreal and just the hammer came down and all of a sudden I just knew I was like, oh no, these are memories. Great. <laughs> yeah. And so they all kind of came flooding back. It sounds like. Yeah. Like, well, they've always been there. I've just had myself convinced that they weren't real. Yeah. What convinced you? Was there just suddenly like an epiphany or was it just was it just like suddenly things clicked? How did how did you suddenly realize that they were they weren't just bad I was, dreams? I was sitting in my in uh, in my ex-husband's kitchen. We had just met and. Um, I don't know, I was just talking about my family and my relationship with my siblings, because me and Cameron have never had a good relationship. Like he got removed from the house at uh, six, no, sorry, 12. I was six and he never really lived with us again. Like he came back maybe for a little stint at 16 and then was removed again. And he never really lived with us unless he decided he was broke and needed to mooch off of our parents in his twenties. Um, so we always had a bad relationship and it got particularly bad when I took off because Cameron decided he needed to be this like savior white knight to, to, to come drag me back home or some shit, which was weird. And actually started stalking me, like had decided to call every single family member that we had in Ontario to be like, Hey, do you have Courtney's number? Despite me at this point being clearly out about my abuse, but at his hands, like I had told both of our parents and um, it was funny because at first when they were the way they first reacted to it was shock, which one would expect. And then my father cried and was all apologetic for a few months. And then my mother didn't believe me at first. Well, I could tell she didn't believe me at first just by the tone in her voice, because when I told her, she was just like, OK, which I kind of expected because this was her golden boy. I didn't expect her to I, either believe me or hold him accountable for anything. And then. They went from uh, apologetic that it happened and that they didn't know and blah, blah, blah and everything to uh, dismissive of it because Cameron had children. So anytime when because I was speaking to my parents at this point, anytime I would talk to them, especially my mother, she would bring up Cameron's children and I'd have to tell her over and over. I'm like, listen, I don't care about his kids. I don't want to hear about his kids. Those kids are not my nieces and nephews. They're nothing to me. Like, just drop it. Just, just, that's all I'm asking is just don't talk to me about my abuser's kids. Wouldn't do it. She refused to do it. Kept bringing them up every single time. And then on a trip to, they actually flew me down to Newfoundland to go see my grandmother's grave. My parents did. Uh, Cause I hadn't, I hadn't seen her grave and she died shortly after I took off from the house. Um, 
and we were sitting in the car and once again my mother starts talking about my abuser's children and I just I kind of lost it on her I'm like can you like not like for the last time can you fucking not talk to me about my rapist children and what was it I I said to her specifically I'm like I don't give a fuck about you your rapist bastards bastard children uh and then my father decided to look me in the mirror in the fucking rear view and I just this memory is just burned in my fucking brain and he makes eye contact with me with me through the rear view and he goes you know you're gonna have to get over that at some point Courtney what the fuck the shit yeah that's what i said i'm like excuse me i don't have to fucking get over anything and i'd really like to put into context that this man is saying this about a child that is not his that he spent a grand total of three years fucking raising and talks about this kids of these of this kid like they're his grandkids when they're not meanwhile at the time i was raising my ex's kid with this same father telling me that this my ex's kid was not my kid because i didn't give birth to it so the hypocrisy was just amazing. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. There's fuck. So any attempt to bring things to your parents essentially just was shot down or gaslit or basically just told to you that like. That, you know, this wasn't that deep, like everything seems like it was either minimized or just told you that it wasn't real. No wonder you thought all that shit was dreams when you were younger. I mean, from what I understand, like there was a point where you just ran away from home. Is that correct? Yes. When I was 17, I took off and I never I've never lived under my parents roof again. Got it. And I took off to uh, see. Okay, so Lily runs this narrative. It's kind of twisted a bit a few times, but I think the current one is that I was apparently lured away or kidnapped by a pedophile and then was ditched by said pedophile in Montreal, which is not at all what happened, first of all. Um, my parents have a Lily basically runs my parents neg- uh, narrative just that's all she ever does because that's the only way to stay in their good graces and I am assuming she plays ball and stays in their good graces and forgives their transphobia because then they'll fork out money if she does I get it all three of us kids went through the route of been manipulating money out of my out of our parents it's just a rite of passage at this point um, so all she does is spit out my parents narrative and my parents narrative conflates three different relationships into one first of all or two different relationships two different relationships into one because when i took off from home i was 17 years old i had gotten a boyfriend and this boyfriend was two years older than me so he was 19 and he happened to be homeless we met on facebook whatever he just long story and I don't know. We were seeing for each other for a long time, for a while, for like a good, like a good month before I even found out that he was homeless. And when I found out that he was homeless, something just kind of clicked in my brain because I'd been waiting forever to get out of that house. Like as soon as I could save up enough money and pay rent and get a place, I was gone. And then when I met, found out Jake was homeless, it just a light bulb went off. I was like, oh my God, homeless is an option. I don't have to wait. I can just leave. And funnily enough, it was an argument over <laughs> the cur- my curfew. Because again, I was the I was a good child. I was like the epitome of the kid everybody wants, every parent wants. And I'm not saying that to like brag or anything. It's just how restricted I was. I had myself growing up, you know, um, when I was about 16, 15, 16. No, I got my first job at 14. I got my cell phone at 15 that I paid for myself. And I got my first boyfriend at 16 and anytime I left the house will be a to go see the boyfriend that I had at the time, which was not the 19 year old um, or to go hang out with my friends or to go to the mall or to go to work or do whatever. I told my parents where I was going, who I was going to be with, how long I was going to be there when they could expect me back. They knew my phone was on like, and I always answer text messages. Like they never had to struggle to get a hold of me. They always knew where I was and they never had to worry. So because I decided I was going to take a friend of mine to go meet my boyfriend, my dad decides to cut my curfew by two hours, just out of the blue, basically to stop me from going downtown. So I lost my shit because again, I was the good kid. I'm the one you can trust. Why are you not trusting me? Lily gets to come and go as she please and nobody bats an eye. And something my father liked to hit me with anytime I brought up the unfairness between uh, what Lily did and what I did, uh, he would say, oh, because we actually care about you, Courtney. And he would say this in front of Lily and not Jesus in front of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. And he would say this in front of her too. 
Like she would be around, she wouldn't be around, she'd be listening, she wouldn't be listening. And it's just like, oh, that's because we actually care about you, Courtney. I'm not Lily's biggest fan, but like. No, me neither. But, but like, she, like, she went through. What the fuck? Yeah. Like, Lily, Lily's got this idyllic fanfic of my life in her head that she thinks I live and I completely understand it I really do because Lily spent her entire childhood with doctors and teachers and our parents jammed so far up her ass you could find her them in her molars like constantly and from her perspective me being the neglected child she didn't see that as neglect she saw me getting exactly what she wanted being left the fuck alone So because she grew up just seeing me as getting left the fuck alone, not realizing the actual, you know, hellscape that was dealing with our parents, because I essentially raised our parents, as weird as that is to say. Um, She thinks I had this idyllic life where I got everything I wanted, but I was just getting everything she wanted, and that was to be left alone. Got it. And so now she's still propping up that narrative with some side effects of like you being a drug addict or you being, you know, this awful transphobe when in reality, you know, a person out of nowhere messaged you on Facebook. And this is right after you found out that, you know, the Lily Orchard, the one who wrote Stockholm, the one that um, runs a, you know, 137,000, you know, sub YouTube channel is your, is your sibling. And also as a channel and a platform that's, largely geared towards young people that yeah it's really funny too because when i first found out she was trans and that she was on the the site that shall not be named like my initial response was oh god no like she's probably got nobody like i honestly was ready to put everything aside because i know exactly i knew exactly how her parents were going to respond i knew exactly the kind of hate she must have been getting for being on the site that for being put onto the site that shall not be named i went and found i tried to find a way to get into contact with her and the only thing i could find was like her old one of her old defunct deviant arts and i sent her my cell phone number like, she doesn't even know that she has it, but she's got my cell phone number. I said, hey, we obviously need to fucking talk because I was ready to put everything aside because I'm like, you're going to have nobody because our parents are terrible, terrible fucking people. Cameron told you to go kill yourself. Like, you must have nobody. And I was ready to be there for her until I put the pieces together about Stockholm. But yeah, she's sitting on my cell phone number right now and doesn't even know it. Yeah. Damn. Because I'm such a transphobe. I was willing to put aside the fact that she molested me to support her. Well, and again, I even noticed, and this is something I hadn't noticed when I read those the first time, as as you go through those Facebook messages, like, your vitriol and subsequent transphobia basically starts dissolving. Like, you're starting to use her pronouns and her name um, more and more frequently. Mm-hmm. And, like, again, it's it's... It is one of those things where, (coughs) again, like, it's not good, but it's understandable. And it's understandable why you would react that way. Because, again, the idea that, you know, your your abuser is now in a group of marginalized people, is claiming another level of marginalization as well, and is running a YouTube channel where they are covering children's media... I can see why you would react the way you did. It doesn't it doesn't make it okay, but it makes sense if that it does that it does that track. Yeah. And like also at the time, like the way this was hitting my brain, um, because all I could see, like when I tried to find out more information about her was that she's a survivor of sibling abuse. So I honestly thought for a good while that she was just like essentially using my abuse at her hands as some sort of sick cosplay and like some dress up to play as and be like oh look at this i'm a survivor of this which i realized later figured out later that that's not the kind of abuse she was claiming but yeah so that that response and i've also um i don't know if everybody knows this i have borderline personality disorder i've been diagnosed with it since i was about 19 i've had medication (laughs) we know about that on this channel hey yeah no uh you you and me uh twinsies yeah (laughs) Yay, Sisterhood of the Traveling Seroquel. Um, Oh, no. And that's something something my family loves to use against me because, uh, one, they don't understand it. 
um, which the irony I love because everything I heard growing up was Lily's actions were never her fault because of her diagnoses. Meanwhile, I'm a lying junkie slash crackhead because I have BPD. Oh, no, they they totally threw all of the stigma possible at you is what that sounds like to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, When I was about 14, I did therapy for a little while because I had finally admitted to both my parents that I was cutting myself. Um, Had been for like a good solid year and a half at that point. Not that they noticed. Um, That's when Lily pulled her little fake suicide attempt. Um, And yeah, so my parents got me into therapy and the therapist told me that like I needed to write this letter to my dad about a whole bunch of different things and whatever. So I did what he said and I wrote this letter and then he told me to read it to my dad. So I read it to my dad and it, it kind of outlined like how the problems with Lily were causing me to cut myself essentially because of the environment that I was in. So my father reads it or uh, he reads it and then puts it down, looks at me and goes, well, those sound like your problems, Courtney, you have to fix that. I hate that. I hate what? What? Yep. Um, When I gave him that list of um, behaviors where Lily was sneaking into my room and everything. And I was fairly certain she was molesting me. The only thing is like, I, uh, I'm a very heavy sleeper to begin with. Like when I was a kid, I slept through hurricane Juan in a trailer home, like slept right through it whole fucking night. I would sleep through um, a fire alarm going on outside my open bedroom door. Like I slept through everything. So if she was molesting me in my sleep, I was hundred percent sleeping through it because I slept like a dead child. Jesus Christ. So I never actually caught her in the act at that point. And that has got to fuck with you, though, as far as like the what if that's God damn. I mean, it oh, correla- yeah. corresponds well, with the borderline, but Jesus Christ. Like I would wake up like our parents. I would hear our parents like especially if it was a snow day for school or something. I would wake up shortly after our parents pulled out of the driveway and look up to see her Lily's face sticking through my slowly opening door. She would make eye contact with me. I wouldn't even say anything. She would just go, oh, you're awake. And then leave. Like, excuse me? You were expecting me to be asleep? What the actual fuck were you going to do? And I had surprised her. So she was expecting me to be asleep. So this was a regular fucking thing. And this was the time my father was refusing to buy me a fucking door lock. Um, I'll shoot to like two, three years later. I had a habit of, I knew where my father stashed his, his loose change, which was always in his sock drawer. So I would go steal loose change from my father's sock drawer. I was a child. I went, stole the loose change one time and I found this fucking list. And I went, oh, here's a blast from the past. I forgot about this. So I decided to, I stole it and I decided to ask my father if he remembered it. I'm like, oh, do you remember me telling you about all these behaviors that Lily did? And you go into the psychiatrist and you told me to write it down and I gave you a list. And he said not to leave me alone with her and you left me alone with her. And he goes, no, that never happened, Courtney. You never told me that. So I throw the list down in front of him. I'm like, what the fuck is this then? And all he says to me is, what the fuck were you doing in my sock drawer? Won't answer my questions but demands to know what the fuck I'm doing in his, in his sock drawer. I thought you didn't remember, though. Thanks, I hate it. Yeah. I also don't understand how the psychiatrist literally sent my, or the psychologist sent my father home and didn't call the cops. Like, nobody had this child removed or me removed. Like, just, he's, it, she's not safe with this child. Okay. Peace, have a good one. Hope it works out. Like, What? No, no, it's true. It's fucked. I, yeah, I don't know either. Um, Britt, that sucks. I'm so sorry. I had to buy my own lock and um, I had to get into a, I bought my own lock and I went and put it on the door. And as I'm putting it on the door, my father gets into an argument with me that I'm not putting a lock on his door. I'm like, fine, if I need to go to a fucking hardware store and buy a door and put it in hinges to put it on the fucking wall, I will. I have the goddamn money to. And he says, uh, and and before he could even say anything, and I said, and if you're going to say anything about be- it being my roof, I will take my money and go live under another one. So he finally shut down and let me put the lock on the door. Um, but I had to give him a key. I wasn't giving him a key. I didn't trust him. So I compromised. I said, I'd I said, I give my mother the key as long as my mother didn't give my father the key. And my mother, being my friend at the fucking time, promised me she wouldn't give him the key. 
So my father was in my room the very next day, as soon as I left for school, because I had the audacity to lock my door. Goddamn. I mean, not to mention, like, the shit with, like, Lily on top of that. I mean, oh, God, what was it? About 12, maybe, she was. She got, like, she had a meltdown at school. She ended up assaulting school staff. The cops were called. They basically took her into custody, and she threatened to slit, uh, in regards to me, my mother, and my father, she threatened to slit all of our throats in her sleep in police custody. Sure. So, you sure she doesn't have BPD, like, but not treated? <laughs> Fuck. No, no. Honestly, I would say like uh, I would I would guess it's closer to antisocial personality disorder. Um, if I had to guess, I'm not a doctor, but she's also had so many different diagnoses, it's hard to tell. Um, but yeah, so she got so so the cops because she said that in in the presence of the cops, regardless of the fact that she was 12, they had to go and search the house. So they go and search the house, and they search Lily's room. And what did you know? They find two big meat cleavers and a large carving knife in the holes in her wall that my parents didn't even know were missing. Right after she threatened to, to slit our throats. Now, my room shared a wall with Lily's. There were two flimsy ass pieces of drywall between us, and that was it. Wow. Jesus Christ. Yep. Um, Holy shit. The cops were going to charge her with uttering death threats because she could be charged as a minor at that point. She was close enough to her 13th birthday. And uh, my father had uh, went down and convinced them not to. Is that the part of the story of the, the timeline I have where it talks about um, basically like your dad convincing people not to press charges? Well, see, the, um, a lot of Lily's life was my dad convincing people not to press charges. Jesus Christ. Um, cause yeah, she did that. Um, she, uh, she got arrested. She got arrested a lot at school. Um, which almost all the fucking time. And she wasn't arrested. She was suspended. Um, until she got arrested at our high school, Lockview high school, um, for, she carved a knife in shop class out of wood and then threatened a pregnant teacher with it. And then when that didn't get her what she wanted, she tried to push this pregnant teacher down a flight of stairs. So then the cops were obviously called and they took her into custody and they came and they questioned me because she was saying some worrying shit. And they basically asked me if she had been showing any worrying behaviors. So I directed them into her room, into the same holes in her wall where she had the knives, where she had her manifesto that she had shown me when she told me about her plan to shoot up Lockview High School. That's why she got expelled from Lockview High School and had to start going to Sackville High School. Jesus Christ. Once again, no charges were filed. So basically, then, there was a whole bunch of filed. times where there could have been some sort of change. There could have been some sort of intervention. by. Yeah, someone. no, this does have very school shooter energy. I agree, Brett. Like, it, it's just like the problem is, is like this could have been just, like stopped at any point and your parents just let it happen. Because it wasn't her fault. She had a diagnosis. It wasn't her fault. She was either, hang on, let me check. Depending on the year, she either had ADD, so it wasn't her fault, or she had ADHD, so it wasn't her fault, or she had a bipolar, so it wasn't her fault, or she had um, uh, oppositional defiant disorder, so it wasn't her fault, or she had, what's the next thing, ASP? Um, no, sorry, the next thing was um, the mental capacity of a seven-year-old, so it's not her fault. Then it was... Just to give people some clarification, that's tended to be how they talked a lot in the 90s, early 2000s about kids. Yes. That and were struggling. They also, they also put Lily on drugs that they are literally not allowed to put kids on anymore. And then changed them ad nauseum. Like, I'm pretty sure this kid was on Seroquel when she was young. Oh, yeah, uh, then they diagnosed her uh, general depression, so nothing was her fault. Then she was diagnosed with Asperger's, so nothing was her fault. And then she was diagnosed high-functioning autistic, and that was the last one that they had landed on. So it's not her fault. God, you can track the DSM changes in your story. Mm-hmm. Because I was there for all of them, because, again, it's not her fault, Courtney. She has ODD. She can't control herself. It's not her fault, Courtney. She's got Asperger's. She just doesn't understand social cues. 
I'm sorry. Someone who doesn't understand social cues doesn't call the 300 pound man fat in order to hurt his feelings and then be happy that he hurt his, that you've hurt their feelings if you don't understand social cues. You can't be facetious if you don't understand social cues. And Lily was facetious. Yeah, this just feels like this feels like the bizarre combination of like a lot of diagnoses just to throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. And then like on top of it, it also has that vibe of like weird ableism where like clearly she doesn't know what she's doing. So there's no, there's, it's all, you know, 100% uh, justified somehow. Like it, it just has a really weird vibe to it. And I don't understand. Cause it was just everybody trying to avoid saying, I don't know. Well, and I think it sounds like no one, no one knew like after, after the initial, after like the, um, the high end autism diagnosis, it just became, I don't know. And uh, then, but I was thinking no one wanted to deal with it though, right? Yeah. Like no one wanted somebody, to deal with the problem. Yeah. Yeah. If, no. if somebody had to like make a definitive action, they would have to actually deal with it. No, absolutely. Now see, there were times when people tried, um, because again, <laughs> Lily did like to lie a lot. And, uh, like I met, uh, it was mentioned in the, um, the messages you guys had read out she did like in front of me i was in her room because i was in her room a lot because again even when we drifted apart because she changed i still tried to be there for her i still spent a good number of years trying to bring my best friend back um so yeah so nothing was ever lily's fault and because that was said about lily and to lily and in front of lily lily internalized that and she took it and she fucking ran with it oh yeah i was talking about the um the the i was in her room because we hung out a lot. Even when I didn't really like her, I was still trying to bring my best friend back. So we still spent a lot of time together. And this is when you were a young kid, right? Still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. This All is right. probably under 15, yeah. under 14. No, we were still, we were still in uh, elementary school. So this was like 12 and under. Because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. only time we were in the same school together was elementary school. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know. I don't know how different um, um, America's schooling system is to Canada, but typically we have um, grade zero, which we call primary up to grade six is elementary school. And then you've got junior high, which is supposed to be seven, eight, nine, and then high school, which is 10, 11 and 12. We're um, usually close to that. We're off by a year or so, but. Yeah, yeah. I think I, you guys, what we call primary, you guys call kindergarten. That's pretty much the only difference, I think. And like, we don't do the whole junior, sophomore, senior thing. You just either you just, you're you're either a minor niner or you're grade ten, mm -hmm. eleven, and twelve. <laughs> fair, um, fair. Because the uh, and the the way the school system works, where we grew up, um, the junior high quickly became too small to house all three grades. So they moved the ninth grade into the high school building, but you're still technically in junior high. So the only time we were ever in a school together, because she was technically two years ahead of me in school, was elementary school. Um, but yeah, she was our father. Her and our father got into an argument, and he went through his typical spanking routine, which is just beating the child really at this point and i went in to console her and um she i went in and she was just screaming and just screaming blue bloody fucking murder and just clenching her face and straining as hard as she could and i just watched her blood break blood vessels in her face and i tried to make her stop i was like what the hell are you doing like what's going on what the fuck and her parents were ignoring it because she always screamed they always ignored things and she didn't stop by the time she finally stopped she had burst almost every blood vessel in both of her eyes and like so many blood vessels across her face and she looks me dead in the eyes and goes i'm gonna tell everybody dad hit me tomorrow at school jesus and fuck holy shit and, and then tells people while i'm right there everyone's like oh my god lily what happened to your obviously they weren't calling her lily but i'm not dead anymore oh my god lily what happened to your face and she's like oh my dad punched me in the face I'm like, no, he didn't. You screamed until you did that to yourself. Which is, that's me bullying her, by the way, is calling her out on her bullshit. <laughs> Telling the truth is bullying her. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. If that doesn't yeah, describe yeah. Lily Orchard's career, nothing does. Like, not to mention, now, the thing, the other thing is, um, Cameron was like a fucking hellion. My mother always tried to have Cameron around. So there were, he was in the house a lot, but he never lived with us. Um, Cameron liked to go out of his way to torment Lily physically, like just straight up assault for no goddamn reason. Um, it started when we were really young. Uh, he used to do it to me. 
but I was kind of more of Cameron's size. So when we were about three years old, or I was about three years old, Cameron would have been about nine. He was trying to um, shove my head through the deck rails that were wooden because they would my head wouldn't fit and it was hurting me. So he decided he wanted to do that. Um, I managed to push him off me. I kicked a boot off in his face and I broke his nose. Um, Cameron never messed with me again after that, really. But Lily, Lily was small. Lily was the perfect target because if you called her names, she would cry and run away. If you tried to hit her or something, she couldn't hit back because she was little and she did get hurt. Um, so Cameron went out of his way to target her and I went out of my way to make him fuck, fuck off and leave her alone, like to make her make him lay off because I'm the one who could physically go toe to toe with him. But he would still do things like uh, he was over one time after convincing Lily to come out into the, the yard so he they could play with BB guns and he proceeded to try and shoot her in the fucking eye with those BB guns. Um, they came back into the house and Lily made tea in the microwave. And she, she always had a habit of over microwaving her tea. And she I know all the all the Brits are just cringing right now. Microwave tea. Um, <laughs> and it's OK. Fuck them. They're transphobic over there. Continue. <laughs> Oh, fair, true. And so she pulls she pulls the cup out of the uh, of the microwave and you can see the water boiling in the cup as she's pulling it out. Cameron walks by and just flips the cup up and dumps it all over. Holy shit. Just out of nowhere. And like my father comes in as the aftermath of this is happening and Lily's screaming in pain because she's got boiling water all over her. And I'm trying to punch Cameron because like I watched him do this. And my father's uh, uh, my father's response is just everybody shut up and leave each other alone literally didn't matter that his child was burnt and the other one did it oh my fucking god yeah so like lily did go through a shitload at cameron and our parents hands like one of the people in chat is bringing up a really weird physics fact apparently microwaves can actually get water hotter than boiling um it depends if it's distilled or not if you have distilled water what happens is because there's no minerals to break the surface tension of the water it'll super boil so it'll get past the point of boiling without ever actually like actively boiling until the surface tension of that water is broken so like if you microwave distilled water and then you put it it won't look boiled and then you put a spoon into it it'll explode into a boil because you finally broken the surface tension. That is that fucking terrifying. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like if if your if your water has like, I don't know, added salt in it for whatever, then you're fine because that'll break the surface tension. Mm-hmm. Tap water doesn't do it because it's got minerals and fluoride that breaks the surface tension on a molecular level. I guess the thing I want to ask about kind of as we start ra- moving towards wrapping up, because obviously we can cover more in another time, but I think... The big thing is, is like the story of Stockholm. I kind of hinted this already in the stream, but we talked about the idea that Stockholm is actually based on things. And we read through the. um, We uh, we read through the the Facebook messages where you had asserted that Stockholm was about essentially you. Yeah, at least the uh, cutie mark crusaders part is it's about me. And uh, well, it's it's my firm belief that it's about me and my two friends growing up. Because I had two female friends growing up, um, we were we were all kind of thick as thieves. We were always at each other's houses. They were very often at my house. They were like the only two people I ever really had at my house. And me being the damaged, damaged child that I was, was like, "Hey, let's experiment." And Lily would spy. Got it. So so you've got all the scenes where the cutie mark crusaders are all experimenting with each other. That's that's a lot of that. Like, obviously, it's her fantasizing about most of it. But a lot of that is based in her spying on me and my friends, practicing making out or giving each other hickeys because. We yeah, through their dare. well, and I remember you saying that you and I share something in common. And that is, is that as kids growing up as both victims of CSA, we both had a tendency to share that with others. I did that when I was younger, um, reenacting the stuff that happened with me and my cousin to another girl. And then you had also mentioned that you did some other things with some other, other girls as well. I I did like, there was, um, early on when I was like really, really young, when I was like six, I was way too advanced, like way too forward with little girls my age. But like later on in life, when I was like 12, 13, it's just like, oh, we're all at a sleepover. Let's play truth or dare and dare each other to kiss. Ooh. Yeah, I got it. 
No, that sounds familiar. I mean, like, again, like... One of the things I think that was noted was that... Correct me if I, I've got this wrong, but it was also particularly that Stockholm seemed to be like a... A blueprint. A blueprint of what may have been intended to be done to you. Yeah, because, uh, like, all growing up... Um, I think it started at about 10 when she maybe learned what it was. Lily always had, um, at least as children, she had a positive view of incest. Uh, she was always intrigued by incest and the idea of it. Um, she would often try to talk to me about it, explain to me what it was, uh. Uh, often ask my opinion on it. Like, what do you think about incest? And every time I responded with vitriol because it's disgusting, she would be disappointed. And when we were younger, she would ask me my opinion. And then it was followed by because I want this to happen. And a lot of the things that this to happen was is what happened to Scootaloo by Rainbow Dash. Got it. Yeah, no, God, that makes sense. It must have been horrendous to go through. Well, on. and it sucks because this continues the mirror, like the thing that I always struggle with with Lily, and that is, is that like, Lily for me is always a mirror because there's so many things we share in common. And like, as a victim of CSA, like I remember growing up and having like, similar like not understanding why that stuff was bad now as an adult it's a very different thing for me because like i can engage in role plays where like various kinks are explored but like the idea the idea that you would talk to or try to like push some of that that there's just it's it's fucking weird yeah um, like there's a difference between like fetishized trauma and like just something you're into well yeah there's a difference between yeah like i, I get i get why uh, you know i get why people like the whole i'm stepbrother i'm stuck in the washer shit Versus like, or the shit that happens on F list versus like this, because this is because this this uh, this really does seem like a a. This doesn't just seem like someone has a someone has a kink. It sounds like like this is actively trying to groom you towards that direction. Um, like she used to be fundamentally disappointed whenever I told her that I thought incest was disgusting. Oh, also, uh, one of the things that came up, and I just wanted to bring this up, so long time ago when Lily decided to claim that I psychoanalyzed her, which I didn't, um, she mentioned that she had a previous uh, background in mental health, and uh, I remember you dismissing that claim, saying something to the effect that, like, she was basically just, like, a camp counselor? No, she was never even a camp counselor. She's just been a mental health patient. Ah. Goddamn. I mean, I suppose that does give her experience, just not in the way she thinks. Um, yeah, like... Like, honestly, Lily's never had any kind of job, be it volunteer or actual job. The only work she ever did was at Tim Hortons, and that's because my mother gets all of her children's, jo children's jobs at Tim Hortons. My it's Canada. That's all that's Tim there. <laughs> yeah, well, well, uh, that and, like, our Timmy's is, like, your guys' McDonald's. Like, it's yeah. just the rite of passage yeah. is where it's where kids go. My mother also worked at Tim Hortons for a long time. She was friends with the owner of a lot of the stores. So it was like, hey, hire my kid. Okay, I'll hire your kid. And she did that for all three of us. I was just the only one who ever actually kept that job. Lily worked that job for all of like five whole minutes and then quit if she wasn't fired. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I and volunteer work just doesn't happen with her. I think that like for me, again, I just I see such a difference between people's like coming back to some of the incest stuff. Like I just feel it's like there's such a difference between people's fantasy life versus like like the push pushing that into the conversation because I'm seeing people in chat mention that like there's like a video where she mentioned like shipping Anna and Elsa from Frozen, which I mean, I don't if you're on the Internet long enough, you will see those two fuck. That's just a thing that happens. If you go on kids YouTube for longer than three autoplayed videos, you will find masked porn of Elsa and Spider-Man. I did not know that and I didn't want to know that, but go, go off. His YouTube is the yeah, worst place in the world. She keeps claiming she's worked with mental health patients as though she's some sort of authority. Yeah, yeah. The problem is, is like, no, she lived with them for a year in the hospital. I mean, let's be really clear, like Lily wants to be me. Some weird amalgamation of you and me. Yeah, like it, Lily just wants to be me. Like Lily wants to have my degree. Lily wants to be as pretty as me. Lily wants to, you know, actually have like respect to people and be able to be horny in public without like it being a problem. Because well, it's I, not a problem as long as you're not horny for children. Yeah, I, I'm horny for furries. Or your siblings. And they're adult furries. <laughs> like I'm horny on I'm horny on Maine. KV is like, uh, and tr <laughs> to be fair, we all want to be as pretty as you. Ooh, woo. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, ooh, 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 what's am, this? So. <laughs> but like, 
<laughs> yeah, like, no, seriously. Like, I, I am so sorry you went through all this shit. Like, I hate this. I just want to hug oh, you. Oh, absolutely. I love hugs. Hugs are great. Hugs absolutely you know hugs. if you weren't so Especially terrified of coming to the u.s i would invite you to michigan to hang out we have cool lakes and shit you should come here like for a like a like a week <laughs> like i'm afraid of canada of, of america it's just yeah okay, it's well, really I, not that deep michigan's pretty chill yeah michigan's honestly really friendly yeah it's like weird. michigan is just baby <laughs> canada we have a lot of tim hortons too you'll feel right at home <laughs> um Actually, I like McDonald's coffee better because they have the old Tim Hortons recipe, but every McDonald's down here is like the service is absolute shit, so I won't go in them. Oh, yeah. No, I've been I've been to Ann Arbor. We order um, we order from there to get our psilocybin um, hypothetical hypothetical psilocybin mushroom tea that we drink. That's that's microdosed. Can never hypothetically enjoy that ever again because Seroquel. Yay. Yeah. What is Seroquel? I I'll ask this question later. Okay, it completely okay. negates it. It does not have super trees, not, sadly. Um, I wish weird. It did. Like even like way Just after the fact. And some trees. Mm hmm. Huh. that's weird. Um, like I hypothetically downed a whole ounce to my face and felt nothing. Yeah, because the Seroquel just kills it. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, like even after the fact, negates the thing, the like. A single tear down my Brit, you can come up here and hang with us. I swear to God, we're friends again. Okay, re add me on D Discord, damn it. I'm so glad the fight is over. Oh, um, I'm, I'm probably starting a Discord server. I actually have started a Discord server for people who want to know more. Well, that's fine. Hit, uh, hit me up. Um, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, hit us up. We probably got some. You're already in our Discord, and you're already in Ketter. We, we just keep an eye on you. And if you ever need people to talk to in the community, please, the people we, we hang with are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Britt, if you want to rejoin the community, please do so. We love you, and I'm sorry you and I got into a stupid fight. And that's why friendship is the best thing ever. There's a lot of weird stories that still come out of Lil Lily's community. And I think that's why, like, there's so much concern on our part, is because we get to hear a lot of fucked up shit, either from you know, people who have been personally um, personally know Lily, right? Or from people who have been in her community and her Discord server. Like, as much as we're going over this stuff, like, no, it is actively concerning to us that there are still a lot of young people around. Like, at the very least, I imagine it's a pretty toxic situation. At the least. Okay? Fuck, like, the server that operates on basically having like a massive list of things you can't talk about, including us and a lot of a lot of things are on that list, okay? Like just regular stuff. Oh yeah, she runs her server like Jabba the Hutt. Don't talk wrong or she'll choke you with the chain. Oh no, there's a lot of kids that get sucked into that. Um especially like kids who don't really have a lot of in person community, which is happening more and more nowadays. Yeah, I guess I guess the thing I just want to say is like I think I'm I'm just gonna echo what Zena said, which is mm -hmm. The reason why we wanted to do this video and why we've been preparing for it for two fucking months, because we've been work we've been sitting on talking to Courtney for like since Ever. what June, May, I don't know. And so like the reason why we wanted to do this, especially before my, my surgery comes up, is that the thing is, is that our goal is to make sure that there is enough data out there so that people can know not to engage with that community. I if this video, right? actually allow some people to get out and realize that like that is a toxic situation great but if it doesn't if there's just no way to get those people out and trust me we've been trying i know brit tries i know that courtney tries i know sega tries mm -hmm. like there's a there are people who have been trying to help us the fact Happy is to, I'm, I'm sure yeah yeah zz every yeah we, zz usually deals with the the side of like the babies when they come in damaged oh i said patchy oh patchy also helps yes i'm yeah ZZ is the the nurse, the more nurturing one. That's Mom's true. The angry pit bull, and then ZZ's just like hug me while Mom goes off. It's until I am angry because PMDD kicks in, or somebody decides yeah. to do a transphobia to my partner, or like. Oh no, that's not to say you can't. You just very much have the nurturing energy of like I need a. No, no, it is. Goes off. No, no, it is really funny because people assume that like I don't get angry. <laughs> yeah, so looks like a cinnamon roll could actually kill you. It's fair. But yeah, so the, the, the goal, the idea here is, is like the reason why we wanted Courtney to come on is that like 
is that we wanted to have as much stuff out there as possible in one kind of cohesive video. Yeah, this can point mm -hmm. to Essence of Thoughts videos. Yeah, this can point to to the Princess Oval video that's been taken down and put back up somewhere else. But the goal here is, is to make sure that people have as much data as possible so they can make an informed decision that we can hopefully either keep people out of that community or pull people out. Um, um, Keeve Sloot, um, thank you so much for the $10. All right, stop, collaborate, and listen. Ice is back with the... I swear to God. You, you nearly had <laughs> what? me. Nothing. I almost did. I almost did. Uh, ice, ice, baby. Oh. oh. Hold me tightly. Flow like a harpoon daily and nightly. God damn it. One of the things we've been touching on lately is boundaries. Okay? And what the fuck those are. And therapy speak was when was basically our last video. People using therapy speak to give the impression that they know what they're talking about. Lily's really good at that. Someone who's been in the system for a long time absolutely would know the right terminology. You know, and there is something appealing to some, like a trans woman especially, who is so, like, angry and willing to be openly angry, right? Even... No, it's, it's something that pulled me in. When I was still a baby mm -hmm. trans, it was something that pulled me in. Lily, Lily... Lily, if you don't understand the context of what she's talking about, can feel very empowering. I also just don't think the commentary community has enough data on a lot of the things she talks about. Like, they don't really care about ContraPoints, and ContraPoints is a million sub channel. They don't talk shit about her. Um, mm -hmm. And she got into a massive fight with Vosh. Like, they, they're, they, they just don't... Like, the problem is, is that, like, I think the commentary community really just doesn't want to engage in that way. And again, like... My Little Pony's got its own whole kind of history that's just bizarre yeah no i, I agree i i agree Riku. And it, it's it's very much like she was cathartic well and for a lot of young people hearing that like no abuse is bad i'm fucking angry about it i'm gonna talk about it like no that feels amazing like the problem is that in a lot of cases in order to figure out that a group is is really toxic or authoritarian or you know the leader's really awful right you kind of have to be around long enough to gather all those data points and then also know how to get out. Okay? And that's a really massive, long process for some people. And frankly, most people don't know how to do that. We're not, there's not a lot that really prepares us for that unless we went through specific things in our childhood. Okay? And if you're talking about like a lot of young people who are probably experiencing this for the first time, no, they're not all going to pick out what's going on, especially in like a community that's probably also love bombing. Right? You you do the lovely tactic of showering with, you know, um care, interaction, etc, and then you withdraw that. Um, you know, when somebody's doing something that you don't want them to do, then you withdraw all of that and kind of leave them isolated and you return the uh affection and care and everything when they start doing what you want to again no you start conditioning people like that's a thing yeah so you know yeah that being said if there's people wanting to leave lily's community and have people to talk to hit us up on the discord let us know um we don't generally post about lily orchard in safe directly just because Oh but, boy, there's a lot of content warnings and it gets not safe for life very quickly and that's a way, lovely but, way to trigger the whole server. But we do have a ticket system where you can start a ticket and a lot of our mods are really good people mm -hmm. who are willing to listen and talk to you and if they don't feel like they can handle it their pay grade, they will summon one of us. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just one thing I wanted to point out. I love how Lily um, claims to be this bastion of mental health, but she's never once on her channel or her Tumblr blog mentioned Kids Help Phone. Do you guys know what Kids Help Phone is? Mm -mm. Like no. in America? Okay. So Kids Help Phone is a phone line in Canada. You don't have to be Canadian and call. You can call. It's toll-free. It's completely anonymous. You can call 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. like if you're youth or, or under, and you can talk to people. Like, you can talk to counselors, and actually, like, I honestly, like, I spent so many years calling Kids Help Phone in the middle of the night to have them talk me out of suicide as a child, and Lily never once, men like, mentions this at all. Weird. That is weird, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, like, and you don't have to be Canadian to call. Like, Americans can call a kid's help phone and talk to somebody at any time of the day. No, that's that's pretty base. Send us the information. Heck, like, we keep a log of, yeah, of resources, too, for especially when people ask and need stuff like that. Um, so what we'll, where she deals with kids. Yeah, no, absolutely. So what we'll do probably, folks, is we'll probably have um, Courtney come on again sometime, and we'll let, you know, maybe do some questions and see... 
you know, if we want to cover more of this at another time, it's late. We've covered mm-hmm. a lot and true. Um, Jesus Christ, like we've done a lot. So, um, Courtney, I just really want to thank you for coming on and telling your story. Like Absolutely, it means you. a lot. And yeah. honestly, like, oh, it's been my pleasure. <laughs> I'm so glad you reached out to us. I know that couldn't have been easy or or necessarily like the most like um like all all of a sudden say is like you should contact these random people that you don't know. <laughs> Well, and I no, honestly, it was great. It was uh, I had actually just found your guys' videos, and and Sega was like, "Oh, do you want me to like put you in touch with these people?" And I was like, oh, "That's those are the ones I'd want to get in touch with first. <laughs> oh, so it was good. kind of perfect. Aww. Excellent. Well, that's so well, good. And like, I'm really happy too that like, I know we tend to do like a lot of political drama or other things or stuff that YouTube's here, but I'm also really happy that we got we were able to give you a chance to actually like. Um, like advocate for yourself and talk and be open about the shit that you've dealt with in this way and actually like give you a platform to you know be able to express all of that because that's not a, a thing that a lot of people get but I'm really happy that we could give that to you no and I really appreciate it too especially with Lily loving to write her own fanfic of my life it's nice to uh, put some things right that she likes to spout well, and if you ever want to come on again, if she's, you know, I have a feeling she's probably going to, po- you know, post more uh, fanfic. So when that happens, you're welcome to come on and, uh, you know, talk shit. I mean, like, I, it's, um, there is never a time where I'm not against talking shit about Lily Orchard at this point. I, I mean, after all, Lily. I am your biggest fan. I guess what I'll say is, like, again, thank you so much for coming. Mm-hmm. We really appreciate you. Obviously, we're going to keep being friends and talking in DMs and hanging out with you. Mm-hmm. And, Ooh. um... No, I'm just going to disappear. Gone forever. <laughs> like I hope to. not. I'd be sad. No, 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 I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm and, like a tick. You can't get rid of me now. And I really appreciate everyone being here for this. Like, we have 256 mm-hmm. concurrent viewers. At one point, we were up to 460. Wow. Yeah, no, thanks for pulling through with this, everyone. Yeah, I know the tech issues sucked, but I really appreciate everyone doing it. I saw um, Tenor Martin said, thanks for the stream and pushing through the technical problems. No problem. Um, we will be back more with more stuff as soon as we can. We're going to try to stream again soon, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess what I'll say is, um, again, we'll talk to you later, Courtney. And again, thank you everyone so much for watching and, uh, we will see you in the next one. Yeah. All right. Have a good one, guys. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening to me. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.